Hey everybody, this is James Zapp from the Dapper Den Barbershop in Ridgefield, Connecticut, and today we have Ian. Cool, that's good, that's perfect, you nailed it. <laughs> no, no notes. <laughs> So just to clarify, Ian, yeah. we're just going to be doing uh, mid to low skin fade, yeah. kick it over this way, sure. which you usually go that way. Yeah, yeah. Uh, leave a little bit of weight right here, yeah. kind of kick this back. Uh, you do have a little bit of thinning up on the top, so if it's all right with you, I'm going to leave a little bit of length up on top so you can kick it straight back. That's perfect. That's okay? Yeah, yeah. Cool. And talking about the beard, what do you want to do with this? This thing uh, is monstrous. So yeah, so really just cutting off the dead stuff, mm -hmm. um, giving it some shape, uh, taking a little off the sides there, cleaning it up. Cool. Uh, yeah. What kind of shape are you going for? Just like. Uh, Boxy, more like angular. Some some angular stuff, yeah. On the angular side. Would be perfect on the cool, side. Yeah, awesome. Yeah. You don't want a point or anything here, right? No. No, okay, no. cool. Awesome, man. Right on. All right, yeah. let's get to it. Thank you. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do, I'm just taking a babalus and I am gonna take an eight guard just to get a majority of this bulk out of here. How long has it been without a haircut? So it's been probably just shy of a year. At oh this my point. god, all this right. This is the longest I've ever had it ever? Yeah, yeah. I think maybe December was the last time. Damn, dude. Yeah, normally it's it's really pretty short, regular haircut. So what do you do for work, Ian? Uh, so I'm a, I'm a social worker in the city, so I work with young people uh, in uh, some of the tougher neighborhoods, high-risk mm -hmm. areas, uh, providing as many opportunities as I can to uh, you know, different aspects of life. That's awesome. How'd yeah. you get into that? Uh, it's something I've kind of always done. I've worked with uh, young people, teenagers, most of my life. Uh, and when I ended up in the city, I uh, ended up with a job that did a lot of that stuff, and I've just rocked with it ever since. Right on, man. Yeah. Already looking better. Look at you, absolutely. man. Absolutely. Huh? Absolutely. New person already. All right, so I just got a majority of the bulk off here. I know this does not look perfect at all, even though that seems to be, I guess, our saying here. It doesn't have to be perfect, but, you know, we're just going to start with our guideline, which I'm going to make perfect, or try to make perfect, as perfect as possible. You're going to be fine. I trust you. Here's your first mistake, man. I mean, your back, back of your neck to need some sun. Oh, yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah, it hasn't seen it in a while. So it hasn't. And we're going to blend the beard into the skin? Yeah, yeah. Cool. Is your wife prepared for this? She is. Seen? She actually, yeah, she's been pushing for this. Oh, okay. She's been pushing for this. Yeah. Haircut. Okay, yeah. good. Okay. So this is a huge change to uh, to go home with. Yeah, no, she's been, uh, she's 100% on board. Good. So I always tell everybody our opinions here mean dick. Yeah. You just got to make sure that the, uh, the missus likes it. Yeah. You ever watch that show, uh, Ink Masters? Yeah. Dude, do you ever see the ones where like they do the tag team? Like they have to switch off tattooing. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Can you imagine if we had to do that with hair cutting? I'd be fine. You'd be fine with that? Yeah. Oh, I would. I would hate that. If someone did the sides and I did the top, I'd be totally fine with that. No, but I'm talking like you have. You get. You get. Have you seen the ones where they do it at the same time? On like a guy's yeah, arms. Yeah, have you seen that one? That's, that's messed oh, up. Yeah. Like matching tattoo, and they have to meet in the middle. That's at messed the same up. Time. All right, so now I'm just going to put a three guard on. I want to leave a good amount of weight up here, so I'm just going to go up a bit right around the uh, parietal ridge and just kind of get some of the good chunkiness off and start to fade it out. I think we're good. That's it. Thanks for coming in, Ian. Appreciate it. You look great. <laughs> okay, next step, profile. I'm going to profile this whole thing out. Just leave a little bit of line right at the top. Where do you go in the city to get your hair cut usually? Uh, I usually, ha I had a barber up on the Upper East Side mm -hmm. uh, that I usually go to. Uh, Is he going to be pissed I'm cutting your hair? Or? Nah.
The dude's name is actually Adam Sandler. <laughs> really? Yeah. yeah. I mean, isn't that amazing? Well, we got Ben Stiller. No, we got Adam Sandler. We got Ray Romano. Ray Romano. Robin Williams Robin that comes Williams. in here. Really? Yeah. Yeah, we got a bunch. Maury Povich. We don't have a Maury Povich. Yeah, I was like, wait, I wish we had a Maury. I wish we had a Maury Povich. What's funny if we had a Maury Povich, it would probably be Maury Povich. Yeah. <laughs> so what are you gonna do with the new hair, man? <laughs> Celebrate? I uh, was probably yeah. <laughs> I'm going to Disney World. <laughs> I'm gonna go buy a hat after this haircut. <laughs> I can retire all of them. So I just hit the whole thing with a uh, half clip and I'm just trying to keep continually working these lines out using the profile going uh, down with the grain. So you just switch it up, go against the grain at an angle just to give it that grainy stroke going up. And I'll continually look in the mirror and just see the lines that I need to get out. All right, so as I always talk about, I like to see the shape of the haircut coming back, coming in. So I'm going to start working on the rest of the haircut. I'm definitely going to come back and start working out some of the lines that I see in the skin fade throughout the rest of the haircut. But I, right now, I just want to get some shape. If I stay in one spot for too long, I'm going to overwork it. And that's the last thing you want to do is just move that line up. What are you using your hair usually? Uh, so I I haven't used anything in a while. Okay. Um, I have used some of my actually beard brand stuff oh. uh, and just used the utility bomb ah. uh, <laughs> and thrown it in there uh, when it was shorter. So Utility bomb? Yeah, yeah. Okay. And that's in the beard or the hair or both? Uh, I've used it for both. Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah. What scent do you usually? Uh... Uh, Temple Smoke is what I usually go with. Oh, that's your poison? Yeah. How's it looking? I like it actually. I like it quite a bit. I think it's looking great. Good, good, yeah, good. We left yeah. some in the back here. Perfect. We're going to come back and do some more cleaning up. I just want to start tackling the beard a little yeah, bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Put a little bit of product we're going to put in here. Put a little temple smoke in there for you. All right. Excellent. Actually, who's got it better than you, brother? Excellent. All right. So for the beard, do you want to take it in on the sides? Yeah, that'd be perfect. Okay. Yeah. So we're going to tighten this up a little bit. Yeah. Do you straighten it ever in the morning or anything? I, I do, yeah. Man, look at this thing. Yeah, it's, Holy hell. It's a lot of... It's a lot of beard. Yeah. All right, so we're just going to give this a really good cleanup. This is your yeard. Yeah, yeah. What made you want to grow it out? Uh, well, one, I, I hate shaving. Yep, that's usually everybody. Uh, and two, I figured, you know, I'd give it a shot. Why not? My wife wasn't a fan of it, but she's come to uh, appreciate it. <laughs> she's learned. She's learned to uh, deal with it. She has. Head up just a bit like that. Thank you so much. We're gonna make her a big fan of the beard after this, man. Uh, she will be, yes. Big fan. And you like it kind of natural coming out? Yeah. Okay. Usually line it up yourself? I, I haven't, yeah. Mm -hmm. Not a bad job. Oh, that's gonna be our. Uh, so, oh yeah, that is. I say it once, say it a thousand times. It's like power washing a deck right there. That was satisfying for everybody. See that in instant replay. <laughs> so I'm not sure if you can kind of see down a little bit. Do you yeah. see all this? Yeah. That's part of your neck hair, okay. which we gotta start getting. Yeah, you know, because yeah. we want this to be a nice, clean, clean, clean look here. So we're just gonna take a little bit off the front and just kind of square it off for the back. Perfect. Back just a bit more, perfect.
All right, you see that shape I'm talking about yeah. there? How we still got it nice and boxed out in the front, but it's gonna have some good shape to it. Excellent. So has anyone touched your beard in a year? No. No, this really? Is the first, this is the first. This is the first time? No, dude, boy, thank God you didn't tell me that before. That's a lot of damn pressure. Are you nervous? No. Oh, okay, good. All right, so when we straighten this out, we're gonna take another look at it. Okay. The thing I definitely wanna focus on, are we doing anything with the mustache? Let me ask you that also. Uh, you know, I sometimes pull it, you know, kind of to the side, but usually it's a little longer. I cut it down a little bit. Yeah. Okay, you kind of do so that. So yeah, if you were gonna give it a little shape, yeah, that'd yeah. be perfect, I'll let it grow in. You wanna keep it long though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, cool, yeah. so we're just gonna kind of clean up just everything over there. Open your mouth a little bit, I know that's always weird. Much, much cleaner, man. Awesome. All right, let's line you up a little bit, right. and then let's come back and take a look at what else we got to do with the beer, okay? Perfect. So we left the neckline, just in case anybody's wondering what we're doing here, we left the neckline pretty long because you can't really see his neckline. He knows that. He doesn't have to worry about ever doing his neckline. I just wanted a good angle on the side, just in case that somebody does see on the side, it kind of has a nice flow to it. So you just so you know when our beards touch, that's called Velcroing. <laughs> all right, so some people have different reactions to this. This is gonna have a cooling feeling. Okay. Uh, if it starts to burn at all, it's not a big deal. Just let me know, okay? All right. Because I just have to put another um, towel on you. Any burning? Nope. Good. I'll just relax. Okay. You feeling good about the beard, man? Perfect. How are you feeling excellent. overall? You feeling good? Excellent, excellent. Good, yeah. good. All right, so you said you use temple smoke, right? I do. Because we're going to straighten this beard out. I want to make sure I got everything right and clean. Um, just so I just shaved you, it's gonna it might sting a little bit because of the salt hitting you. Okay. Uh, usually it doesn't sting you at all, but just so you know. So we're just gonna put some temple smoke in this. Do you use the sea salt spray at all? You're just using the bomb. I don't. Instead? I usually use the bomb. Yeah. Okay. Got a nice froth going here. It's gonna be warm, let me know if it gets too hot, okay? All right. Temple smoke utility bomb. Talk to me, man. How do you feel? I think it looks excellent, man. Yeah, you like I love it? it? Yeah. Dude, you're yeah. looking great, man. Uh, I mean, the hair alone. I mean, the beard was just a normal, just clean up, yeah. kind of a maintenance thing without getting it touched for a year, which is going to look really clean and nice now. Yeah. Uh, but the hair, man, that's a difference. It looks excellent. Awesome, dude. You'll appreciate it. Ian, thank you so much thank for coming you, in, sir. dude. I really appreciate, appreciate it. it. Thank yes, you, thank man. Thank you. Thank you from the Dapper Den Barbershop. Okay, what we do then, Ricky? I've um, got like medium to low sort of skin fade. Yeah. And then um, not too much off the top. Just a trim on the top, yeah? Yeah. Just the foil to go on the, on the neck, yeah. No worries. What do you have to Okay, I'm just going to create a baseline in the number two. <laughs> Dave's definitely not leaving. Yeah, man. I got that contract of employment last night and I just thought, hmm, coffee coaster. Yeah. <laughs> Eight o'clock on a Saturday morning. Morning. Morning, morning. 
So it's using the C motion when I'm flicking out on that. Okay, so second guideline number one. Right, Scott, go in too. Okay, now I'm going to work out my point, my zero, and my one. So I'm going to blend with a 0.75 and then a 0.5 to get rid of that weight there. Yeah. 0.75. You see that line disappearing even with a five? That's because he's got quite fair hair. Darker hair would need a lot more, a lot more work on it. To be honest. <laughs> Now, there's a little bit of just uh, like a little bit of weight there that I can see. So I don't, but I'm not going to go straight in with a zero or a two. I'm just going to pick it out slightly with like a point one, just on that one little section because nothing else needs it. It'd be too heavy-handed to go in with a with a flipper again. On I just when well, I just need to remove that little bit of weight. The yeah. Okay, now I'm going to work on the zero, on the foil, the double zero, should I say. So I'll just remove any hair at the bottom. I'm just going at the bottom of the fade here, just literally flicking out so that my foils don't grab the hair. Hair's nice and short when I foil. Because he's had like a, uh, a low kind of slash medium fade, there isn't much to foil. So normally I, on, on this kind of, kind of fade, I'd just flick out just the bottom with the foils. But say it was a higher fade, I'd have actually put a section in with, with a, a guideline with a, with a foil, and then I blended the foil from double zero foil to 0.1 with this, but that's not necessary on this cut. Again, just flicking out with that like C motion. You don't want to be putting lines in, you can go down as well with a foil to try and smooth out any, any marks or um, lines that you do put in. I was always taught to go down first and then to flick up on the way back up. So down first so that you're smoothing the hair. And then back up to blend. Some irritation is, is often with this, often occurs. But you just put a bit of alcohol at the end and it'll make sure it's sealed and there's no bacteria on that fade. So I can see a line here that I've put in with the with the detailer, with the sorry, with the foil. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna remove that line with this. When you have tools as well, you kind of you learn what blends what. So sometimes, say I use the wild foil, I can't blend the wild foil with this super liner. It just doesn't it just doesn't work. Whereas I'd use the and this pro foil for this for the wild um, foils for blending the line out. So different tools work with different different um, combinations work really well. And that's that. The weight's gone from that. So now next we're going to blend out this, we're going to take this two a little bit higher and we're going to blend the one into the two using a 1.5 guard. Are you 
taking anything off the top? Yeah. I will take some off the top, yeah, it's only, a, it's only a light trim, but at the moment, I, what I want to kind of have here, I want shape. I'm trying to create shape at sides as well. I don't want it just to go straight up, like no, a lot no, of... Uh, that's because I want it to know. Yeah, yeah, oh yeah, yeah, of course. It's only a little bit off the top, though, isn't it, to trim, yeah. Now this two and a half is just letting me take my fade a little bit higher. Um, sometimes I decide if I want to, how high I want the size to go, kind of at the end of the fade. So I'll put a guideline in, but I may move it up slightly as the cut goes on. So 1.5 guard. And then I'm going to put it into 1.75 position. This hair is really, really easy to fade. This kind of light, coarse hair. But other hair may need a lot more, lot more work on a fade like this. So particularly here now, I'm going to work on this, this area here. So I can feel that the occipital bone is there. So I've took my fade just below the occipital bone because I can see the shape of the head can warrant me blending out. So, but I have a dark patch here, which I'm going to take out with a 1.25. Now I'm not going, I'm not digging in the head here. I'm literally just flicking out. It's really easy to move up your fade as well, and then you end up having to take fade higher and higher and higher. So always just make sure that you're, you're being minimal with your strokes. <laughs> not your vinegar stroke. <laughs> okay, now we're going to work on that sideburns, blend it in, and then we'll get to the top here. So 1.5, just finding what kind of depth, what kind of length that needs to be to blend it in. So drop it down to a 1. So I always try and blend up from the ear, from the bottom of the ear. So I'll put my 1.5 in the bottom of the ear and work up, and that way you don't end up with blended sideburns that are wonky. And then ball closed. Now I'm going to take off the guard. Run that at half, so half closed lever. And then I'm going to finish it with a zero. So it's just a light trim on the top, mate. Yeah. Yeah. Same kind of style, yeah. With forward, forward yeah, movement. Yeah. Going to the left and just sort of mess up a bit. Going that way. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to take a section straight across there. Because I'm cutting, because he's having the hair forward, I'm going to cut the hair from the back to the front, so in the direction of the cut, of the cut, of the style. Sorry. Just going to trim that. So I'm point cutting so that you get lots of texture into this because he likes a messy style on the top. So I'll pull that board next. Take a snippet from my last section, and it lets me see where I need to cut. I normally leave the hair slightly a cut at an angle. If he wants the style to go that way, I'll be cutting at an angle, just a slight angle there, so the hair is, is higher on this in the centre of the head than it is on the side. That kind of helps with um, styling as well. And the front always needs to be longer. Yeah. We'll pull that up. Put it like a. 20 degree angle. 
versus Bruce, but I don't know. Another two days, I get some cool events. Now I'm going to just comb the hair nice and forward so that I can see what needs to come off. I know he hasn't got to take any more off the top, but I've got the sides to work on now and also the fringe. So the fringe might have a little bit more, but I want to dry that first and pull that down. See what I can take off it when it's dry. But now we're working on these areas here. So I like to leave that bit forward because I know that I want to cover that section of hair there. I don't want to, I don't want to ever take that short and let it expose the recession area here. So I like to hold that down and I pull that back. And now if you come out this side, Carlos, you see that. Well, that's disappearing anyway, that angle on the hair. You can see it straight away just from doing what I'm doing. So now I'm just going to scissor over comb straight over here using a nice wide, wide comb. So seven inch scissors. I'm using my mirror just to check that I've got a nice kind of shape to the hair here and it's equal on both sides because what I wouldn't want is it to be kind of lumpy here or lumpy up here and I can see there that it's nice on both sides so it's even all the way around. I've kept my guidelines have helped me create a real even fade and my blending's working nice on top here as well. And then by pulling that section back and cutting around, I've kept this length here, which is what I was trying to do. So that I haven't cut this short, I wanted this hair long here. Now if I'd have just pulled, started pulling hair back from here, I would have chopped all that off. Okay, I like to finish off um, any blending with just 20% thinning scissors, just because it takes out any imperfections. This is not essential and it can be done with just scissor over comb, but it does take a lot of time. All right, I'm just going to add a little bit of texture. You can see how thick that hair is there, look. It's a really blunt line. Okay, the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to reverse, reverse texture the hair. This might feel a bit weird, I'm cutting all your hair off, but I'm not, okay? So I'm not actually cutting the hair, I'm just cutting little bits. That also, that's adding the texture again. Okay, before I style it, I'm just going to blade up the edges, make it nice and tight around here, just trim that neckline, and then I'm going to stick a bit of uh, beer brand sea salt spray in it and dry it so that it, it's set. I normally just edge up the eyebrow while I'm here as well. Finishing touches, and now we're ready to style. I believe we're right at the end, yeah. Oh well, it's cool. No problem. So blow drying hot first. Take a round brush. <laughs> I 
How do I feel, mate? Oh, yeah. Perfect. And then I just like to seal, seal the bat with a bit of a bay rum. Okay. How do I for you? Sweet. Cheers, man. Nice to meet you, Ricky. Yeah, and Happy You're sensitive when it comes to cutting length off the top though, but are you ready to take that length off? Yeah, it's for for the channel. Let's do are it. you just saying that because we're on camera or are you actually okay? No, I can send. You can cut it off. Okay. <laughs> hey, I'm Andy. This is Ryan. We're at Born Free Barber Collective in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, and I'm going to be cutting his mullet, cutting it down, and giving it some shape. Andy and I have been uh, kind of working on this mullet for a little while now. We've been growing it out since November, so it's been about four to five months, and I think uh, it's getting a little bushy back there and just want to take some weight out and also shorten the front of the cut, try to get some volume and balance out the length in the back. My goal is to kind of bring it up um, like right above his eyebrows. Does that sound about right to you? Yeah. Right? That's not too short. But we're still going to be pushing it back. You know, a typical mullet is super short in the front and long in the back and you kind of push it forward and have it in the front. Um, but, you know, we're going to give him more of like an like a individual stylized mullet. You know, we can make the top shorter and more of a uniform length when mm -hmm. I push it back. And then that will allow me to really take a lot of length off here. And I'm going to thin it out, but I'm going to avoid thinning it out too much because you do have that really fun wave. Mm -hmm. And with wavy and curly hair, you know, if you just take the thinning shears and like thin it out like crazy, it's going to get really frizzy. Yeah. Um, so we're going to avoid doing that, but we're going to make it shorter and, and take some weight out. Great. So, I'm going to start with a two. And I really don't want to go any higher than, you know, right above his temple. And I can blend that in with clipper over comb later and eventually some scissors. So I'm just going to take this. And with the pandemic, you know, we're wearing masks. Um, in PA, you have to wear a mask when you're in the barbershop. Um, but I've gotten pretty good, you know, at holding it with my fingers. And it can get pretty tricky. Um, but I just kind of like hold it with my thumb and then press his ear down. And with the two, don't go too high and kind of scoop it out because we're going to be leaving this length here long so I can blend it in to the top. And then I want to follow this kind of curve of his head. And again, we don't want to cut into here too much because we like those long pieces. And this is just creating like a clean working space so we can fade it down to the skin. Again, leaving those alone. And we're gonna fade that in with some scissors a little bit later. So now I'm gonna take one and a half and I'm slowly just gonna start fading down. So I'm not gonna take the one and a half as high as I took the two, but it's gonna be one and a half closed and just follow that same line that I made initially. And then you're gonna open it all the way, which is essentially a two. And you're just gonna blend that into that two that you did. You know, it doesn't look like there's that much of a difference from what I did, but you're just setting yourself up to make that fade a lot easier and a lot smoother to kind of work around. And I like to go two to one and a half and then to skin so I can make that line with the skin that I'm eventually going to fade in. But I can make this kind of as clean and as short as possible without losing my place. And I'm not going to go very high. I'm really just going to, again, follow. So you see that this line here is pretty like uh, symmetrical with this line here. It's in line with it. I'm just gonna do that on the other side too. Again, not going very high, not going too high.
So I'm just going to kind of scoop these hairs out. And not going as high as that zero I had on the clipper because you don't want to keep bringing the line farther and farther up. You're really trying to blend this length into what you just did and not make it higher or shorter. Okay, so that should be short enough now for the, the foil shaver to catch. And sometimes if there's like a little, like you just saw what I did there, there's a little hair that, you know, you need to get. So you can just use the corner of this, kind of just like flick it out of there. And instead of using my comb, I'm going to use a bristle brush. Uh, I just want to get all of the little tiny pieces of hair that's going to come off of this. And the pieces of hair that come off with the foil shaver are kind of just like dust. So this is helpful. And with foil shavers, you want to apply a good amount of pressure. And you can kind of flick up with these like you do with the clippers. And that just means you're applying less pressure as you push up. So you can fade it in rather than like really getting in there and then creating a line that's difficult to blend out. And then what I like to do, you know, just to kind of make sure that's blended in is I'll take it and I'll go down with it. It'll still take a little bit off, but it'll just, it'll not create that, that harsh line. You know, this is the shortest, uh, triple zero on the, the clipper. And then we left off with a one and a half right here. So all the way open, make another line. Flick up so you're not creating just a harsh line because we want this to be kind of a seamless fade here, obviously. You can use those corners still to kind of get around the ear so you're not cutting into the fade. And now close it halfway. You see that little one right there? We're gonna be blending that in. Don't go as high up as you did with the clipper all the way open or else you're just gonna be bringing the fade higher and higher and eventually you're gonna be all the way up here and that's not what we want. So I'm gonna grab my one guard pop it on and I'm going to open it all the way and that's essentially one and a half which is what this is so I'm using the same length just to make sure we don't go up too high and I think I sound like a broken record saying that but this essentially is a low taper a low fade and that's it, it can be pretty difficult because it's like you you have to keep it low the whole time so that's why I'm, I'm cautious and I keep using the same number over again but just with different guards now I'm gonna close that so it's a full one. And just get those long hairs in there that are making that fade not seamless. I really need to expand my vocabulary when I talk about things. <laughs> I just say the same words over and over again. So this is open. I just want to get some of these long hairs here without cutting too much into this area that we want to leave long. And we're going to be blending that in with scissors. It's a little, there's a little too much right there, but I want to get that with my scissors. Um, so I, again, I don't want to bring it too high. But right now I kind of want to clean up that line on his head. There's just like these hairs just like don't belong. Okay, so again, I'm just kind of pushing these back and seeing which hairs don't really belong. All I'm doing is cleaning up his hairline. I'm not necessarily giving him a shape up or messing with his hairline. I just want to get these hairs that are just a little too long and create that nice shape. Super simple. So I'll take my comb and push it up and hold it up. And just kind of get that hairs that don't belong. Be really careful here. Kind of go around and do that. And it's really only the hairs that will be sticking out when this is down. So you don't need to go too high. And you prefer doing like the scissor work on the sides with wet hair? Yeah. Yeah, you know, you have a little bit more control that way, especially 
like in the smaller areas. Um, I mean, it can be done dry too, but I like to do it wet. I'm so afraid now when I walk around with my scissors. Did you guys see that video of that barber that stabbed himself <laughs> in the heart with the scissors? No way. In the barber shop? <gasps> if he's watching this right now, I hope you're okay. I think he's okay, but it's terrifying. Anyways, back to your hair. So you see these long lengths here. We just kind of want to get that even with everything else. So I'm going to take my comb, pull it out. Just follow those, those guidelines that you gave yourself with the clipper. Um, we're not gonna cut much length off the back because that's like the best part of this hairstyle is the length in the back. But we do kind of want it to be as straight as possible. Take it from your fingers, pull it down. I like to rest my scissors on my finger just to create a lot more stability. And again, we wanna wet it. And this isn't my favorite spray bottle, so I'm sorry if it kind of, it's like a super soaker. Was that sorry to me? Yes. Okay, it's okay. <laughs> Is it weird to hear all the things come out of my mouth that are usually in my head when I'm cutting your hair? A little bit, but it's we, a lot. We, I mean, you can get talkative during your cut sometimes. Yeah. But These that, are all the things that go through my head though while I'm cutting your hair. Yeah. You get pretty focused during your haircuts when there's uh, no cameras. Because I like doing it. Yeah, I know. I like it. That's why we like you. <laughs> oh, thanks. All right, so, <laughs> so we're gonna section off this front piece and that's gonna be our guideline all the way back. Um, so take about an inch section. So cute. <laughs> what would you call this haircut? The baby emoji. The baby. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm gonna take about an inch off. And I'm just going to cut straight across. I'm going to add in some texture later, but I just want to make sure it's nice and even right now. But you can already see that that's a lot shorter. So that's going to be our guideline. Take that section, pull it up. Wow, we did leave it really long on yeah, top last time, we did. didn't we? We basically didn't take any out. So you can see that line you just made. I know the mullet, it can be a little, uh, you know, out there or goofy to some people. And uh, yeah, I admit some of it is like a little bit of my youthful rebellion trying to do something new. I would be lying if I said, I don't like reactions, whether negative or positive. So when people's eyes widen, when I turn to the side, it's kind of, it's funny to me, you know? When you turn, oh, they see this, they're like, yeah. oh, I wasn't expecting that to yeah. be there. And just keep chipping away. I'm not used to cutting this much length off your hair. <laughs> well, it's not usually this long either. It's not. Now we're getting to the point of the head where we're not going to be cutting this way anymore. We're going to be cutting this way because that's where his head starts to change shape. Mm -hmm. We want to be bringing the hair straight up from that head. Like, and it's not straight up to the ceiling like this. It's, you see that point of the head, the, the trajectory of where that would be coming off, if that makes sense. And then now you have another guideline for that different direction that you're gonna be cutting. And we wanna create another section. I'm gonna be working towards me and then I'll go to the other side. So before I move to the back now, I want to cross check everything that I just did up here. But this looks really fun and I'm loving this. Um, and I don't use as clean sections here because I just I kind of do it quickly. Um, and I just kind of want to just pull up the hair. See, you see that little corner there? We want to make sure 
that those corners are taken care of. And with wavier hair, it's a little easy to get lost. Um, and that's why cross-checking is so important, but that's also why clean sections are so important. All we need to do and before we blow dry it is to even up this length and this length here. He also wanted to thin it out a bit here. I'm not going to go crazy with it. Um, but with, when you push all your hair back and especially leaving it long back here, it's going to bulk up here because that's where all of the hair is collecting. So it needs to be thinned out a bit. And you know, there are some people that are like, don't chop it in with your thinning shears. And yeah, don't chop it in to the point where you're making the hair shorter because you're just going crazy with it. But taking out, uh, you know, using your, your thinning shears, the few snips just to get some of the bulk out is totally fine. We wanna leave this as long as possible, but we don't want there to be just like a stark difference between this length and this length. So I'm kind of going to go at it at an angle and then grab the other sections and do the same thing. So I'm going to take my thinning shears, texturizing shears, kind of pull it out. And I do, I do two cuts with it. I'll go one, move your fingers up farther, so you, you know where your scissors are going to be going. You're not just like chopping it in. It's strategic. One, move up, two. One, move up, two. Now I'm gonna use a little bit of salt spray, Beard Brand salt spray. But I don't want to use too much. Um, I want to use just enough for the texture of his hair to kind of come through. So when he runs his fingers through, you know, you can kind of see that like messy mulletness on top. Um, but and I don't necessarily want to put anything in the back here. Um, I want it, that to drop and salt, um, salt spray will give your hair a lot of volume. And we want this to kind of just be laying down. I like to kind of pull the hair up a little bit in the front to give it some volume. I'm going to take my hands and just kind of move it through and then it'll get more of a natural finish to it. I'm going to end with uh, some cold air, you know, with, with high heat on a blow dryer, you kind of want to end with the cold hair to close the cuticles of the hair. So it creates less frizz. This is the shortest we've ever made your hair on top. How do you feel? For real? I think so. You always make me measure it. Could you measure it? Yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to know. So let's see, what did we leave it off at last time? We did six and a half. <laughs> is it way less than six and a half right now? I think so. I would imagine <laughs> so. I cut a lot off. Okay. Right about there. One, two, three, four. We're at four, four? inches. Okay. I think that is the shortest we've gone though. Yeah, uh, if we weren't filming, I would have probably specified that around four inches is what I was looking to go for this time around. Wow, I read your mind then, yep. huh? <laughs> All right. Um, I'm going to throw some hair tonic in there just because it's a little, it's a little for puffy. But I'm not going to put much in the top um, because that would kind of counteract the salt spray that I put in there. And I really like what that salt spray did. But I mainly want to put it back here. I put some in my hair too, because I feel like I look like <laughs> Hermione in Harry Potter 1 and 2 when she looks like she stuck her finger in a light socket. <laughs> okay, all right. And I have my texturizing shears. Just kind of the same thing as like the, the double snip back here. And if you just go crazy with them, you're gonna, you're gonna do too much. But you see the benefit of leaving the length here because now it blends in with everything and you're able to still push it back. 
if we were to cut that too short, it'd be his profile, it'd be sticking out too much and it wouldn't go with the top that we cut and it'd be like short, puffy, long, and it just wouldn't have a good shape to it. Nah, it's gonna stay. <laughs> I like it. At least it's symmetrical. <laughs> you gotta curl them? Maybe. Is there a way to braid them? Woo. Hey, Bob, let's put this on the scale, dude. <laughs> hey, what's up, beautiful people? It's Big Chris again here at the Beard Brand Barber Shop in Austin, Texas. I'm with my good buddy Ray. Ray's getting ready to take some family photos, and his wife said his hair cannot look like this. So we're gonna change it for him, get him, some, get him something really nice. More on the professional side, so uh, I'm thinking shorter here, longer here, taper in the back, pretty simple stuff. Stay tuned. So we need to do a little bit of debulking. So I have my number three. I think ultimately I want to go down to a two, but I'm going to clear everything out with this, uh, this three blade first. And Andis has this super strong cordless detachable clipper. Man, this hair is wet too, and it just, it just blows it right out. Miranda, I'm trying to think of crazy thumbnails right now. Like, pull it out like that, maybe. I just. Oh. So you said you're from Austin originally, man? Yeah. Uh, born in Austin and grew up in Buda. So. Grew up in Austin. Oh, okay. Grew up in Buda. Yeah, just, uh, that's pretty much Austin. That's pretty much, that's going to be South Austin soon here, man. Yeah. Once we get this uh, San Antonio Austin conglomerate <laughs> running. It's coming soon. It's coming soon. Feeling better already? I'm just gonna leave all that there, bro. Perfect. <laughs> send my son to grab oh, your wife's gonna love that. I'm gonna keep this to a little bit lower and then I'll go back and clean up the clean up around that ferrata with my three.
Yes, the now I'm more ready for the fireball. Oh yeah, I uh Since we're doing something clean, simple, and um, super easy to maintain for him, I'm just gonna, man, so this whole haircut's gonna be balanced. I mean, really, I'm gonna pull all the hair to this side. And I get this clipper and I just go straight up off the parietal. Old barber showed me this, this trick. And the shape of the head almost creates the fade force right in that area. Come back and do it in this section. And this helps to smooth out the transition from the sides to the top of the head. Right in there. All right, so we got three. This is the two. Coming back into the sideburns, I got this one and a half blade. And I'm gonna grab a 1A and hit the very bottom of the, of the sideburn too. This doesn't do very much for the fade, but as far as like the grow back, as far as the hair behind his ears and in the sideburn area, like he'll notice this weeks later. When all that hair starts coming back on him. And I'm gonna come back with that 1A. And I'm gonna shorten up these sideburns here. Straight in this area. All right, let's get Ray a nice taper going here. Trusty Andis Master never fails. We'll taper back here, keep it super simple. First go all the way open, then I go halfway closed, and then I just go all the way closed. And then you can come back and almost open the clipper all the way, kind of, I don't know, hitting any weight that you're seeing here. Come back with it all the way closed, almost all the way closed at the bottom and sort of clean up some of this stuff too. So I'm gonna come back with this one and a half and I'm gonna start fading down. Right now I'm uh, fading into the two that I put into this area. A little darker than I want right there. So I'll run that two again. That's right in this area. And this is the 1A, uh, this will be like an adjustable with a number one guard on it. I'm blending into that one and a half, but I'm fading down into that uh, cordless master open. It's almost completely faded, a little darker in that area. Pop that one and a half back on. Paper's all buttoned up, man. Let's see what we can do with the top. That's super cool. Is it a restaurant, is it in Buda or is it like South Austin or? South Austin, uh, Severus Grill. It's on Wayne Cannon. Uh, that's right, okay. Oh, uh, really? Yeah. Holy cow. Friend Rain and I met. <laughs> what type of food? Cajun. Uh, Cajun food, okay. 
Yeah, right. He's from uh, Baton Rouge, Louisiana, and so he brought that to Austin. Oh, shit, man. It's good food, yeah. He built a good rapport with a lot of the customers there, and like I said, that even if they're not eating in the restaurant, they're ordering to go food pretty regularly, trying to, you know. Glad you're getting some of that local love, man. Yeah, no, it's it definitely helped. All right, so top's done. Now to blend it in with the side, I'm gonna do clipper over comb, but I'm actually gonna use my one and a half blade because I wanna retain some weight in that area. Don't want it to be like super duper flush going straight up. To the eye, it will be that way. But you and I will know that there's just a little <laughs> bit of excess hair right here. And it all blends together because um, this one and a half blade gives a, a nice texture. I'm gonna use this clip over comb technique. So the sides are blended in with the top, man. Cross and T's, dot some eyes here. Kind of just taking small sections, making sure everything's blending into the way the side with the sides that I like. And then right here, what I'm doing is um, <clears throat> sometimes when you. When you do a cut like this, the corners can be too heavy right here. And it's a, your head is round, so it curves right here. So if you're cutting it square like this, the pros will know what I'm talking about. And um, if you've gotten haircuts like this, uh, some of the other casual viewers, notice the hair kind of hangs down real long right in this section. No matter what you do there, it always wants to come back. So what you just saw me doing there is sort of pulling out that corner and looking for the tip. Uh, typically the growth there can be like weeks and weeks longer than the rest of the cut. So when it grows out in a week, boom, you're like, yo, this shit falling in my face. So I was just pulling that out and nipping those corners right there just to keep that from happening with them. So the hair is almost dry, but now I want to grab the one and only old money, sea salt. Hairspray. <laughs> I'm just gonna put like two or three squirts on here. Work it into the root, just like my buddy Eric tells us. And then um, we'll continue blow drying it all the way to the end. A little bit of trimmer work, man. You're looking pretty handsome, man. <laughs> I don't know, let's just see it up close. I'll let you get final say, of course. See if we got you in a good place here, man. Wow. wow. <laughs> I dig it. I like right, a lot. Man? Yeah, I nice, really dude. And I think Thank that's you. gonna oh, yeah, yeah, that's gonna grow out well on you too, yeah. man. Thank you. Dude, my pleasure, brother. So I'm gonna get you some product today too, man. And I'll, I'll let you take some of that sea salt spray home. And uh, I don't know, man, right as the hair is towel dry, even if you're not into a blow dryer, just spray it in there, like right before it gets dry, dry. Run your hands through it, kind of style it the way you think you want it for the day and then let it dry. And throughout the day, you should be able to run your hands through it and whatnot and kind of reset the style. Products like that are cool because they're an akin to hairspray, but it, fingers don't get all jammed in there like hairspray, if that makes sense. A little bit of 
arbor dust. You are photo ready, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Sasha of Philadelphia Barber Company here in Philadelphia. Today I'll be cutting Travis, giving him a low skin fade. So we are going to be starting with a low skin fade. I'm gonna start with my wall magic lips. And I'm gonna go through the head and just uh, start with that by first um, making my mark in the corner where I want to start this. Typically I do upside down just because I like the way that the line works with it so that I have <clears throat> the spot where I'll be uh, fading up into. Then I'll flip upside down and go ahead and start the skin up to that line. It's important to get the um, this as low as you possibly can because you'll be skinning that after all this cleaning up. Now I'm going to grab my wall mag go through and get rid of any extra hairs. Sometimes you have to pick up the skin to fade nicely into everything, so stretching it sometimes will help you out and give you an extra few inches to get in there. Anything that doesn't look faded, you're gonna go back in and fix that in a second. So you don't have to stress too much on that. It's basically taking out your bottom area. It's probably my favorite tool because it leaves such a smooth shave. And it's super easy to use with the single foil on it. I'm not gonna pronounce it yet. I think it's a uh, bablet. <laughs> Baby bliss. I've heard it pronounced so many ways at this point. Now I'm gonna go back and I turn my uh, mag upside down to blend in those last bits. It's great with like, uh, when you have lighter hair like this, to make sure not to go too high because the hair itself already will lighten so easily. And you don't want to cause, like, where he wants a low skin fade, you don't want it to look like a high skin fade either. Next I use my cordless wall clippers that are um, the 100 edition, 100 year edition, 100 anniversary edition. <laughs> I like to keep them open all the way when I first go in there. And I go all the way to this temple, that corner, and I'm working my way through. For areas that sink in a little bit, you're going to just, again, pull up and it, you get a more flat surface. Don't worry about the color variation, variation later. So he has a little bleeding on the back of his head there? Mm -hmm. He does. Um, so for that, pretty much no matter what you do, you're going to get a little difference um, in color variation. So it's important to just 
remember to have like forgiveness for these areas and you can take them a little bit, you can close it all the way and go a little higher with it if you want. But I'm going to grab my magic clips in a second for getting rid of this last bit of the line just because they get um, a little closer than these ones get. So we can get all of that, including into those a little bit deeper. So grabbing my magic clips. By wall, because uh, when they're off, the teeth come up a lot higher than the other ones. And I've tried to adjust the other ones, but they don't, they tend to not stay up as high. So I'm rocking it just on the corners. I don't want to leave another line behind. And then I'm going to open it halfway and like just lightly get in there. I'm not really pressing on it. I'm just letting the clipper glide. For me, it's so important to finish the skin fade before I go into the rest of the hair. And I, I've seen other people like they'll just do uh, their tears and then go back and fix everything, but I like can't concentrate until I get through this. Back at the uh, wall clipper hundreds. Closing it halfway. I'm gonna go ahead and start blending in this line that I've left behind. And still, I, I like to do the rocking motion. I really feel like it helps to blend in things without being too abrasive and leaving like hardcore lines behind. Switching over to my one. I'm also going to close it halfway and continue to do the rock. And for my corners, I like to close my one all the way and just get the corner just so that it's a little easier to detail at the end of it and so I can get like a more precise line. Grabbing my one and a half now. Again, I just half open. For the cowlick, I don't like to go too deep into the cowlick because I'm going to use my blending shears later to actually blend that instead of using my clippers so it has more of a natural look. Quite the calyx, too. <laughs> it is, but I love calyx. They're my favorite. I have one client that has a completely upside down in the back calyx, and he's never had a fade before. And he came in, and I, I just asked him if I could fade it because it was like almost like a dream come true. It was so much fun for me. I'm glad it's a dream for you. <laughs> <laughs> Let me play with your calyx. <laughs> I pretty much just like graze this area until I get to like my two and then I'll start getting a little deeper in there. Which is now. <laughs> and again, halfway. I'm using just my corner right now because I he doesn't like this so abrasive. So I just use my corner to just get rid of that line. And then I'm going to close it all the way to get rid of the line underneath that. Fade that in. Where the cowlick ends up meeting is where I'm going to go ahead and go into because that's meeting into the fade. So we want to make sure that that looks 
nicely blended. Going back to the one and a half, just making sure everything's nicely blended. I'm gonna close it halfway to get this right here. And just get rid of those longer hairs. Cause he likes to comb this down and put a little bit of pomade in there. Now I'm gonna go through my edges, make my edges look nice. I can pretty much see where I cleaned up last time. So I'm just following that. But if I, let's say this was a new client, I would just look at his natural line because I'm not trying to push anything back. I'm not trying to make it look too wild. I just want it to look nice and fresh. And as far as this goes, we already did skin, so we don't have to worry about any of that. From what you can see here, we already have like, he has a natural line. So like I said, I'm just following his natural line. I'm not pushing anything back. Just keeping it nice and clean. And if I see any little hairs along the way, I'll just like eyeball them with my surgeon hands. And then I like to freehand some of the work because I'm not gonna really take scissors through here. I'll take my blending shears or thinning shears. Including back here where the cowlick is. Cause some of the cowlick actually wants to go this way or this way. Some of it even will try and go that way. So I'm gonna go through and just hold his head in place gently. <laughs> And just grab some of that and then go a little up to get all those unruly ones. That'll be like the one part of this that makes me look cool. <laughs> and putting in a hard part. I like to use the Velcro styles, which I stick to myself all the time for fun. Uh, I try to do an extremely natural part because not, not everyone wants a thick part. So I usually will let the client let me know if they want it like thicker. And then I just take these guys out. Here's where I like to take my Hanzos. I'm just gonna go in there and blend with those right there. Time to start the top. So typically I would do half an inch for um, a trim, but today I think we took it a little shorter last time than we normally would. So I'm gonna just like kind of just take a little bit, maybe just a quarter an inch just to freshen it up. I'm not quite getting to here yet, so we're just gonna skip from here back. After every time I get back here, I'll always comb the hair back in the position that I want it just because I need to make sure that I'm not taking hair from somewhere that I, I wanted to leave behind. For my corner, I'm just gonna tilt a little bit so he's got something to comb.
into the back. I'm just gonna actually go pretty much where I left off. I'm gonna go back this way. Just getting everything even. And for the unruly cowlick. <laughs> Grabbing my blending shears. I'm using just the tip of the blending shears, I'm gonna go through and just like take out some of the weight and length. I promise sometimes when you cut into calyx with scissors and not blending them in, you'll end up with what looks like a bald spot, even if the client isn't thinning or bald at all. So that's why I try to use my thinning shears. And I also like to use it in the parted area too, just cause I'm not a fan when you have like almost that perfect line here. So I'll take the thing, my uh, comb in there and just almost uneven just to blend it. And then clean up the lines in the back that you've created with your scissors, if you did. I use my uh, magic clips just because they get a lot closer than everything else. I'm gonna start with them open. And I'm just gonna kind of go back and forth and just slowly flatten them. And then I'm gonna close them halfway. Almost all the way. And then all the way. And then I'm gonna open them back up and kind of just go down. Close. Adjust. And I usually try to pick a part of the ear to match it. So I'm gonna go with right here. Again, I'm not going flat quite yet. And then I just like stick it down there. Ready for a style? I'm gonna use the uh, spray clay. It doesn't. But I'm gonna say it's, it's the cut. So <laughs> great. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot of fun. Um, I usually like to use my fingers afterwards just to give it like a texture in there. So what we did today was we just did a low skin fade. Um, we blended it into the top, and then we gave Travis here a hard part with not an abrasive area here. Um, and gave him plenty of hair to just comb over and kind of mess with and tossle around. And then we blended right into his beard. Hey, I'm uh, Matt, I'm at Gentleman and Rogues Club today. Mahesh is going to be cutting my hair, so let's hope he does a good job. Let's hope. <laughs> <laughs> what are you having done today? Um, yeah, could I get a grade zero along the bottom, kind of a low fade, and just trimmed up on the top a bit shorter, just kind of choppy. You want it choppy, yeah? Yeah, like choppy, a, lot of... a bit shorter, please. Quite a bit of texture? Uh, a little bit, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's quite thick at the moment, it so is, hopefully, um, yeah, yeah, yeah really just... Thick hair. Yeah, so just kind of do what you think looks best for it. Really. Okay, so you want like a zero, really low, a nice low taper. Yes, please. And then we can work with the length on the top. Yep. Brilliant, okay. What do you use on your hair, oil? Um, yeah, kind of oil or clay, usually, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> try to tame it. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see what you win. Yeah. So, for, should we let should we let them in on the conversation that we're having? Yeah, so, sure. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So the conversation is that Matt works at an oil refinery. So, yeah, I'm so, one of those guys. Yeah. <laughs> so I I gave him an Extinction Rebellion leaflet yeah, to take with him. He should live, he should live in Texas. <laughs>
<laughs> yeah, you should. You should be living in Texas. You're in the wrong. You're in the wrong place, man. I don't have the skin for Texas. Yeah, I won't. Uh, I don't tan. <laughs> no, you don't need. You don't need to tan to be in Texas, mate. You just need a cowboy hat. <laughs> yeah. So we're going to come in with a zero. I'm going to be today. I'm using my red deer clippers to do the zero. These ones, the head clicks off completely. So um, these ones are designed just to go in really nice and tight. So I'm going to be using these just to mark out my zero around the edge. And as you can see, I'm going in really, really low, really low taper just above the ear. And I'm going to arch it around the back. I'm going to follow the hairline. So it's almost like I'm cutting the hairline away. Like you're giving them a mullet. Like I'm basically giving it, but people don't, people don't really have mullets today these days. Bring them back. Well, you know, I, 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 grew, I grew a mullet, mate, and now everyone's doing it, so. Prints out. Yeah. I think it was actually Eric. So. I don't think it was. I think I, I mentioned it to Eric once about mullets. He didn't even know what a, a mullet was. He thought it was a, he thought it was fish. He thought that I, he, I was going to put fish on the back of my head. And I said, no, no, Eric, I'm not doing that. So that's what that was. <laughs> so we're going to repeat it on the other side, obviously. And like I say, we're going to come in nice and low. We're just following the hairline all the way around with my zero. So this is a true zero, this, this clipper guard. The teeth are super fine on here. And I've got two speeds on here, so I can just go, I can take it up a little bit. And, and what I'm doing is I'm taking it up, it's on its highest motor, so I can take off all the hair. Matt's got super thick hair as well, so I'm quite jealous of that. So, like I say, just taking the hairline up just a fraction, in with a zero. keeping it nice and clean. And so with this, with this clipper in particular, I remove the entire head, the new head goes on. So we put the new, when, we, when we put the new head on, just clicks into place. And then this one's got an arm so I can adjust this one. So I'm gonna just take it up, put my guard on. Mr. K. Carlos with a K. I'm just going to knock out a little bit of weight. Good morning, Carlos with a K. Good morning, the hex with a ma. With a ma. <laughs> We've got Matt with a ma. Mahesh with a ma. Cars with a K, cars with a C, and a Ross with a R. I remember when my daughter was really, really young, and she's 19 now, and we were in a, in a shop. And uh, so you speak phonetically when you're teaching kids the alphabet, don't you? Yeah. So it's A ah and B and K. Yeah. And we were in the shop, and uh, in, this, in this little shop, they had little like pin badges with the, your initial one. And I, was, and I was buying these little toys for my daughter and I was looking through them and then there was an, an E for Ella. So not, and I went to the woman, oh, I'll, um, I'll have that E eh as well. And she went, you know the what? I went, the E. Eh. She went, you mean the E? I went, oh yeah, the, <laughs> the E, yeah. <laughs> okay, we're going to come around the other side. Let's say we're just going to knock out a little bit of this weight. So day off today, Matt? Yes, it is, yeah. Nice. Do you do really long shifts? Uh, usually, yeah, 12, 12 hour days. So you do 12 hour shifts at Ruffin? Yeah, so we do uh, two 12 hour days and then two 12 hour nights, and then we get uh, four days off. Yeah, one of my customers, he's an engineer. Uh, he works like away in India and places like that, and he'll be away doing like, he'll, he'll have a contract for like five months, and he, he won't come home, but he earns such good money. Doesn't work for the rest of the year. No. <laughs> it's not bad, I guess. Okay, so we're softening up this line. Just going around the edge.
So I can just turn the motor down on this and I can just run it a little bit slower if I want. If I'm coming in and I want to take the, I want to take the, the blend a little bit softer and I want to take it a little bit slower. But I run it a little bit faster when I'm taking hair away. Okay, so I'm going to change my guard and we're going to start to break up that baseline. Start to look for Matt's little blend at the bottom. So uh, this is a half guard, just going in, starting to break up the line as you can see. I'm running the motor a little bit slower as well, so this gives me a little bit more of a precise finish to the, to the clipper. It breaks up that line. <coughs> Because the tape is so low, when I come to take this weight away, what I'm going to look to do is to create the shape with this line of weight through here. Matt's hair being really thick. What I don't want to do is take away too much length from the top of his hair because it's just it's just going to stand up. You tend to find that, Matt, if you... Yeah. yeah. And take the uh, clippers in at an angle as well. So I'm looking, I'm going towards the growth line. So the way the pattern of the hair grows, I'm working towards that pattern. Working my way around the head until I get to the back of the ear, really. And then I'm gonna come back to the front. Okay, let's go clipper over comb. Start taking out this line now. <laughs> what? Well, these are these these are. Uh... <laughs> these are mate. These are great. I love these. Texas, in Austin, when we were there. Yeah. Oh my god. Mate, everyone. Oh, he was only for that night, you know, so he could be seen. <laughs> but he's been wearing them in the day as well. It's weird. I wear like hot. Look, these are these are sick. Look at that. Look. Man, these are sick. Look, simple. <laughs> yeah, you are simple, mate. Obviously, simple is true. You're trying too hard. I'm not. Like a uh, um, middle-aged. <laughs> I'm, having a, I'm having a midlife crisis. Yeah, I, see, I couldn't even remember that. <laughs> I couldn't afford a Harley Davidson, so I bought a pair of bright yellow shoes instead. <laughs> Make the noise. <laughs> I, just, I just run around in my bright, bright yellow shoes doing that. <laughs> Look at me, ladies. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, we, we saw you coming. Yeah. Yeah, we saw you, mate. <laughs> So I'm just going to go back to the haircut now and <laughs> soften up the line. Okay, Matt. So we're just blending that in, keeping that little bit of weight through here, yeah. right? But then we're going to te take the texture through the top, all right? Going back to your haircut, how often, how, how, how often are you going to get it cut then after this then? Uh, I usually aim for every two to three weeks, so, um, yeah. So I don't need to take lots of length off really, do I? It's about the weight more than anything, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Cool. I mean, a little bit of length off will be good, yeah. Um, but yeah. Okay. Normally what happens there, when, they, when, they, when Jack edits that now, he'll do Carlos burping, three, two, one, and then, it, and then, he, and then he burps. Oh, okay. Okay, so what I'm gonna do, we're gonna come in with a scissor, and we're gonna cut upwards. So I'm cutting, I'm bringing the scissor in and I'm coming up. And I'm taking some of the, the weight away, but we're retaining a lot of that length. So some of that length will come away. So we're coming really close to the finger and then we angle the scissor up as we cut. So it takes out a lot of the, a lot of that weight. It gives a lot of texture, this, this technique. It's really nice for really thick hair. 
be just rocking the scissor backwards and forwards using the using the finger as a guide coming in And then I'm going to chop into through the front because I'm just going to take a little bit more off there because it's longer through there. I'm going to come down. So I can really feel how much weight I'm taking out through there. And it, it separates the hair out. So if you come on the top here, Carlos, you can see a lot more texture the hair breaks up a lot more. It feels more textured that way. And we'll come in. So when I'm doing it in real time, this is, so if I'm not demonstrating, that's basically how I would do it. Coming in, just chopping in. Connecting the sides to the top. And Taking a little bit of the length off as well. Because I want that to blend in. So a little bit of scissor over comb. Everyone keeps asking me about the Y2 Park comb. So this is the longest one that you can get. And the reason why I use the longest one is purely because I like to be able to take larger sections with a hair and I like to scissor over comb a lot and this is brilliant for scissor over comb. So I can hold the comb way back, gives me much more control. Coming around the haircut. Okay, we're going to go through and texturize. So we're just going to soften up the line really super, super thick. So these texturizers just soften the hair up a little bit. And there's a bit more hair to, to texturize because we're doing such a low taper. So normally, you know, if we were doing a, a norm, like, a, a, like a higher taper or a high and tight, you know, obviously the, the blend would be right up here, but the blend's down here, so what I don't want to do is I don't want to leave a, a load of, a, too much weight through here because so what's going to happen is as it grows out, he's going to end up with a really weird pear-shaped type head. We don't want that, Matt, do we? Uh, no, thank you. Okay, my man. We're going to dry it through a little bit, see how it looks. I think I've taken enough weight out of it, to be honest, but we'll see how you feel with it. Feels better now. Now I'm drying it, it feels better. I can feel how light it feels. So now it's dry, I'm just going to come through, just refine this little back bit. Because it's such, because it's such straight hair, such strong, coarse hair, it sort of sticks outwards if you're not careful. So we're going to put a little bit of defining cream on. Just because it's, it's a cream, because I'm putting it on because it's a more of a hydration for the hair and because your hair's so coarse and thick. All right. Look at how happy he is about his haircut. Like some more? That's great, thank you. All right. Yeah, good, thanks. Ooh, it does, but that does, it does. 
Hey, Beard Brand, I'm Mahesh, and we're in Gentleman and Rose Club 2 in Bambi. Birmingham. Dave's new shop. This is Joe, this is Tim, Dave's brother, and Joe is going to cut Tim's hair today in the new shop. Yeah. Yeah, man. Woo! Yeah. Let's do it. Uh, what I'm going to do, um, we're going to look at taking Tim with a really, really low fade, because Tim has quite a, um, a proud uh, oboe. So the way I'm going to work today is I'm going to take Tim's uh, fade quite low, work into the hair because we're looking at growing sort of out what he's got on top to aim for sort of a future style. What we're going to aim to do is to just take that to look a little more natural, tidy him up and hopefully give him a little bit of trim as well. Uh, so I've got my um, wall magic clip with my grade two on with an open guard. And what I'm going to aim to do is to just knock set myself in with a sort of guide um, into sort of where, where we're going to try and blend into, aiming to sort of keep, not go any higher than here. So because I'm, because I'm using the two and a half, it's not taking it too high, but I can sort of see where I'm blending from and where I'm blending to. And we go for a 0 0.5 fade on Tim. So this will give us enough room to blend into. So I'm going to put my half guard on. I'm going to just take it really low. So that's going to be the base of my fade. I'm just going to get my fade brush. <laughs> okay, cool. So I'm going to put on my, uh, my one and a half guard and I'm going to leave my lever open. So as you can see that I've dropped that, which means it's giving me, sorry, I'm in your way there. Um, which gives me enough room to sort of blend up into it. So one and a half guard open, just going to base me in and I can drop down. Camera loves you, Joe. Camera loves me, mate. Working the mangles, working the mangles. Show me Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon. Can you do that? <laughs> really, really making my debut on camera as easy as possible, ain't you, mate? Beer, yeah, this is Dave after one beer. Imagine him after several. So now I've got my one guard on, open. I'm just going to come back up into that. And as you can see, we're slowly disappearing. The whole time, just removing any excess hair that I find. Got my fade brush. Not a special fade brush. It was two pound forty nine in West Brom Market, and uh, one of the little guys that I work with called Milad went and got me this, and he came along with a spray bottle because we used to work in opposite sections, and I used to soak him, absolutely soak him with my spray bottle. So he went and bought me like a really really misty spray bottle, and threw mile away. So yeah, I ended up with this. So. As now, I've just got a slight baseline in, so I'm going to put back on my half guard and I'm going to open that about halfway, so it's about a 0.75, and just work back up. I'll just turn your head a little bit, Tim. And just to fine tune, I'll open up just use the corner on my clipper. 
to work in the fade. And we get that nice sort of slender line. I'm just constantly opening, closing, fine tuning where I can see patches of weight. And as you can see, we're not coming up high enough to, uh, to open up and be able to see his oboe. Dave, say that word. Obsipicupical. I can't say the obsipicupical. I can't, really can't say it. I really struggle with it, man. I struggle with it. I really struggle with it. I've been or, cutting air for long or, enough now, I should be able to say or it. Or what you could use, you could use just the... The O-bone exactly. is what I tend to use. Yeah. I'd like to bone. Or the elbow. Yeah, the elbow. Yeah. You blend in with the elbow every yeah. now and again. You cut around the elbow. Yep. There's a little technique that I've learned that's called elbow over cone. <laughs> and uh, basically it's for when, when kids won't sit still in your chair and you get a little elbow over cone to make them sit there. But, yeah. It's from the Mahesh School of Barbering, but it's been translated into Brummie by myself. It's spreading waves across the West Midlands. Um, right, okay, so I've got my wall detailer. I'm just going to put in around, take around the ears, and give a little bit of shape here so I can define and sort of see where the haircut's going to go. So I'll just get around Tim's ear, where we've got a lot of overgrowth for hair. I've got another one of my uh, two pound brushes as well that have come from Smevik or West Brom Market. And then I'm going to come down. Follow myself a natural line. So we remove all of this overgrowth. We can see we've got a bit of shape to it now. So I'm going to do the exact same on the other side. And then while I'm here, I'll just take no guard on. I'll open it up to about a quarter of the way and just knock that out. So as it all blends a little bit better. It's a slight taper, but as we're only going to 0 0.5, it's not overly a lot to do. We'll sharpen them all up later on. So I'm going to get my, uh, my clipper comb now and just aim to take us up into here as we're a little bit overgrown on either side. So, just see where we're over. We've got here is where his overbone is. I'm just going to aim to just keep that all pretty even. I'm just going to check my sides. I've just got a little bit of weight that I'm just going to take out now that I've removed a bit of bulk. And just take a little bit more out where it's sitting, where I've taken that bit of bulk. And the same on the other side. Just fine tuning and removing any sort of weight that I can see that isn't, uh, that shouldn't really be there. So I'm just going to remove anything that shouldn't be where it is after I've cut it. Bit of weight. My beautiful six inch, six and a half inch cheap scissors and my lovely rose gold comb that's been picked on today. I'm just going to sort of take this off. The way we're going to wear your hair is push back. Yeah. Um, the, the aim is to obviously grow Tim's hair, but it will all come back. Um, so that's what we're aiming for. We've kept that oboe covered.
A bit of sea salt, it's going to give it some nice texture and keep it quite soft to finish with. I'm going to use my nozzle on my hairdryer. And with a light round brush, throw on the sides. So um, I'm going to use some texturising powder, Tim's hair, just to give it sort of a natural fall, instead of using sort of a product that's going to sit in. So I'll try and get an even sort of coating. For a bit. <laughs> yeah, I like to make sure there's enough in. Yeah, you can. Oh, thanks. <laughs> yeah, see? That's lit. It's even better yeah. than me, isn't it? You know you want Joe to be your barber now, Blessed, mate. Blessed. My guy, my guy, my G. B25, hold tight, B29. Birmingham man, 0121, hashtag, hashtag, G-A-R-C. <laughs> What's going on, Beard Brown? I'm Paul the Barber, back in General Rose Club, Birmingham. This is Josh, we're going to do his hair and beard today. Alright. Alright, alright. <laughs> right, so what are we doing, man? Uh, basically, just, uh, just a bit of cut of curls off the tops and then um, uh, just a shape, a shape up to the sides, right? To be fair, yeah, and a bit of a trim on the skin off. Yeah, nah, nah. Mm, mm, nah, nah. Do, do whatever you feel is best, boss. Right, cool. Probably do it low. Low zero, low scheme. You know me well. Right. I'm going to cut myself what we call a foundation all the way around the side. I'm going to build the haircut off this. As we're going to take it as low as a zero, or maybe even skin. So just connecting those side panels into this top panel and just reaffirming the shape that I'm putting into it. Look at the way he uses his scissors. Jeez. <laughs> you know, I dropped my nice scissors the other day. You go. I was upset, mate. You break them. I had to send them off, yeah. Yeah, right, there's a natural base to get scissors with bad. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I sent them back to where I got them from. Uh, oh, yeah. I got a drop warranty on them. I thought you meant there was an actual shop somewhere in England that just sells, like, repairs hairdresser scissors. Oh, oh yeah, there will be, mate, for sure. <laughs> yeah, 100%. Big money, innit, man? Expensive tools. I'm done with the top. So if I come his hair forward, you can see this line here. This is the foundation line I'm putting. I'm going to do, I'm going to put a three guard on, closed, so it gives me a three. I'm going to come up to my foundation and come through it. That'll just connect my clipper work into the top. Create less scissor over comb in that I'm going to have to, have to do later on. So I'm going to bring all the sides down to a three first. And then, We'll get on with the fade. So again, just coming up to my foundation and I'm working up to it and through it. And it's just creating a nice connection. Which will make my life a lot easier when it comes to refining the haircut. Right, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to give myself a reference point. I'm going to go off roughly where the centre of this hook. I'm just going to tap myself in a line. Yeah, that way, mate. Yeah. So, I'm going to start clearing this out my way. Yeah. 
Just down on the other side. I always like to leave behind clean work. Then I like to sort of put lines in and then come back to loads of messy bulk. So clear it up as you go along. It just looks better. Drop your head down a set of rubber. Not that much, a little bit. <laughs> I know I went a bit over the top there, though. Need to fall off the chair, mate. Yeah, Too many bears, mate. Mm. I'm going to come with my slightly longer detailer. I'm going to knock out, because I've created, I've created a line here. I'm going to knock out that line with this one. And I'll bring that up to my zero line. And look, there's a definite transition now from the zero and then like a little mini fade down to the detailer. Now I'm going to come in and fold it out. So I'm going to push the machine up and tap it back down so not to create any horrible harsh lines. But what a lot of people get wrong here is to take this foil right up to the zero they don't leave themselves any sort of space to transition from the zero to the to the skin basically. Right now, fun bit, fading. Got half guard closed, gives me a true 0.5. Just get that way a bit, so well. I'm not going to bring this 0.5 all the way to the end of his hairline. I'm going to leave a little bit here. Need to blow with later. If we leave this bit longer, then when I fade down, it'll leave a bit more weight so when it comes to lining it up you'll see it better. Right, so put my point 0.5 in, half open. Like that one, mate. It's going to fade down now. Quarter open. Closed, just knock out that zero line. Right. And repeat the same steps but with a one guard. All right. We're going to blend down, so as I put a three in, put my two guard on, closed, actually open, two guard open, so three, two and a half, I'm just going to start knocking this, start knocking this out, and now I can start going over this bit of here. So that will fade in good then, because you put the, uh, you did it with a three at first, just to get it all Yeah, right that's it there. Yeah. It's all numbers, mate. Yeah. So two, one and a half. Yeah, when you get halfway through the trim and you just you start looking at yourself thinking, oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Start getting gas, you start oh. feeding yourself like. That happens both ways though sometimes. <laughs> oh, don't know about this one. One and a half. Now, here we're going to go one half open. One fully open, one fully closed, sorry. Thank you, Yeah. Right, I'm going to put my half guard back on and I'm just going to sort of refine this little bit. I can see a little weight here. Start a bit open first. Closed. Just going to go after this little line here that's been put in. As long as you don't apply too much pressure with this half guard, you can just polish your fade with it. Right, next section. I'll come back to that and detail it once I've done the whole lot. So, rinse and repeat. So, point five section. But what we're going to do this time, we're going to fade into the first section that we did. You can see already now, we've got a nice transition appearing. 
Right, so we've fired it up, and again, two guard back on, open, and I'm going to blend down. Two guard closed. And the process, half guard, open. Blend into the previous section. And closed. Right. As I was saying, blending one section into the other. Okay, I'll start just touching it. Right. Only little bits of scissor over there that I want. It's only ever minimal bits. Blur effect. Well, what does that actually mean in French? No one knows, mate. Not in the French, mate. No. Who's got the curly hair in the family? No idea, mate. To be honest. No one. Your dad's hair straight? Yeah, yeah, yeah. My dad's hair straight. My mum's hair is mostly straight. I think she's very in check the air, your mum. Right, everyone, of course. Uncle. Uh, straight. Everyone's straight. Everyone's straight with short hair, mate. Like right, the plumber? The plumber. <laughs> I was going to say. The plumber put a bend in the pipe, mate, to be honest. I'm doing it, it's using a diffuser on your head. It's going to highlight the natural texture in your hair, the natural curls. Make it even more curlier than when you walked in, mate. Right, so I've applied heat directly to the, to the hair, the hair even. I've got it where I want it. So I'm now going to soothe it by applying cold air to it. Now what I'll do is close a few stuff, relax the hair. It'll also help maintain the style that we've just put in. Right, so what do you want to do with this then? Uh, just a shape up and just a good, just a trim so it actually all... Put a nice shape in yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It all fits in nice. And keep the length, yeah? Yeah, keep... Mm, remove a little bit of the length. Yeah. Well, and I'll take a little bit off just, just removing the stragglers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But maintain, yeah. Let's maintain, maintain as much as we can. Length. Alright, so mate, I'm just going to comb this through. Oh, I ain't used my beard oil. I can tell. It's like combing a hay bale. And I'm just going to come straight back. Uh, how many people do you have looking at you yeah, during this point? Well, maintain eye contact. Yeah, yeah. That's a big no-no, that oh, is. I think it's pretty weird. Yeah, very I weird. Do that. How about you, Dave? I think it'll work on me. I'll do it today, just to wind him up. <laughs> <laughs> Stare into his soul. Yeah. So I'm doing nothing drastic at the minute, I'm just going after the stragglers that are sticking out. Do you find there's some food that's really hard to eat with a beard? Yeah. Like burgers, cereal, anything, well basically anything with a spoon. I'm, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm quite messy mate to be honest, so it's just everything. Let's talk to Ash. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right, so tash. what do you want to do? Do you want to keep the length of it or just take it um, off your lip a bit? The, the end, both ends of the tash are now coming into my mouth. Right. So I want to clear it. Clear, clear, clear the tash bit. Gotcha. All right, so I'm going to comb it out. Come under it with my comb. Create a line. A conservative line, because I might have got it wrong. Right, go back in. Do it again. If you, you do less than you think first time around, you're not going to take too much off. It takes seconds to, to, to go back in and make another pass like that. Right. Let's go my scissors. Well, if everyone, as soon as everyone breaks up from work, they're just going to go down to where isn't a tea for a beer. Well, that's exactly what's going to happen there. I mean, I went up to Wuss for the weekend. Oh, mate, come on, you're on camera, bro. You can't do that. Oh, yeah. Rest mate. Yeah. Covid, please. Covid, yeah. Covid, you on you? Right, bro, sure. Yeah. For a I'll pay the fine, mate, for that hickories, mate. It was lovely. Pay the fine for a good time. Yeah, yeah. When was the last time you had seven inches on your chin? <laughs> About two hours ago. <laughs> 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 yeah. 
Right, it's going to tape through your sideburns. Just come in. One half. And just work down your guards. One open gives me that same one and a half. Closed. Half. Again, I'm going to find a reference point. I'm going to use this part of his hair. And as I knocked out that point 0.5, I'm just going to do the same here. So half open, four open, closed. Detail it. And then foil. Alright, right. Just gonna apply a little bit of shave gel. Just to avoid any irritation really. Only a tiny bit. I don't know how barbers use that shave foam. Uh, no. I can't see through it. That's I the thing. I need to be able to see what I'm doing. What's the razor? 245 razor. Is, is there much difference in razors? Difference in weight, balance. Yeah. So there's not just like a standard blade, one blade fix all. Like nah, there is. And the difference in blades, man, the quality is yeah. ridiculous between like, uh, say, like, uh, um, what's that? Wilkins' sword. Wilkins' sword do a double edged blade. Yes. And then you get one called Pro Sharp. Mm. Uh, and mate, I can't even tell you the difference. So is, 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 it's is it like, like, it's like paper? Is it like going and, from and going to platinum? <laughs> like going to go and shop in Primark and then going to shop in like, like Gucci? Like, yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah, yeah. Is there much uh, difference in the price? Yes. That's, sure. that's the main thing. I get like 200 blades for about two quid from Derby and yeah. I get 100 blades for a fiver. But when you're yeah. doing like you know, a lot of cuts a year, you know, it does that for a Yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't know how many blades you get for it. You have yeah, to change it after every customer, don't you? Yeah, you have to every customer, yeah. Yeah. Sometimes I'll use 200 customers. 200 customer. cuts. You know what I mean? Like, sometimes yeah, yeah, I'll change yeah. the blade, and then I'll be like, oh, I forgot a bit on the neck. So I'll put another <laughs> yeah, blade yeah. in, you know. That makes sense. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's a penny, but when you're doing so, like 20 cuts a day, it adds up. Yeah. Mm -mm. Cool. cool. Right, I've got a really nice beard oil for it. Yeah, it's called yeah. Old Money. Yeah, give it a go, mate. I, need, I do need some beard oil, to be fair. Need some old money as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah. As you said, it's like, it's like combing a bale of hay. <laughs> beard oil just makes it 10 times better, doesn't it? Yeah, it smells lovely as well. Especially if you get someone's ever be face. Try and get that right through to the roots. It's good for the skin. Mm. It smells lovely. Smells amazing, actually. Yeah. Are you ready? Is that brisket mission? Right. Yeah, Josh? Yeah, that's good, man. It's all good. Yeah. That's cool, bro. Look at that fade. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Love it, man. Yeah, Brilliant. Good, bro. <laughs>
makes the beard look a little bit too thin or a little bit too narrow. So we'll take out the edges. So I don't normally sit in this, use this chair, you normally use that one, so I keep going to press the pedal and it's not where it normally is. <laughs> okay, so. You're gonna be the test of like, the back or not. It's oh, definitely back, mate. Oh, this is either going to go <laughs> one way. Yeah. Serious, <laughs> this is either going to go it's really well, mate, or it's going to be horrific. If, if Eric got stick for it, I'm going to get real bad. Okay, so I'm working out where his oboe bone is, and it's around there. So you want a low skin fade, don't you? Yes, please. Okay, so I'm going to go below his oboe bone then, in that case. So we're going to, the oboe bone's there. I'm going to go around here, and that's my fading kind of canvas. So what I've done at the back here is I've created like a smile shape. So the reason being is it's, it's easy to kind of replicate on either side. So I can stand back here and I can look at the two points, the meat at the ear, they come down and round and, it's, and it makes a perfect smile. I can alter it slightly as well if I need to. I know you can see it needs to get a little bit off there. <clears throat> ear to ear, yeah. So now, that's, that gives me a reference point, so when I turn Stuart to the side, I can work now from, I can pick another reference point, so I can go from his temple, where his eyebrows, so it's going to be low. So I'm going to work from there. And I'm going to come over and dip it. And they're going to marry up. And we'll repeat that on the, this side. The more accurate this is, this line, this bass line, the smoother the fade turns out. So now we're just going to remove the bolt. We've got the clipper on a zero. So the lever is fully closed. And we're just removing the bolt. Grab a little brush. We've got a new barber to the team as well. This is Brandon. Brandon, say hello. And Brandon doesn't really want to do any beer brand videos as of yet. But his work's definitely good enough to do it, so I'm going to coax a few out of him in the, in the future. Shy. He's a little bit shy, I think, mate. Okay, so we've got a zero now, and we're going to take it down with the foil. Have you had the foils before? Yes. Yes. Yeah, yeah. For these, or...? Yeah, yeah, really happy, yeah. Okay, cool. So we've got the foil. I'm actually going to give this just a little bit of a clean up. Okay, so they're sounding a lot better now. So we're going to be just putting a nice little zero line in. So tell me, how did you meet Mahesh? How did I meet Mahesh? Um, so, uh, when I lived down in Dorset, uh, I, I was told that a gentleman in Rose Club were hiring at the time. And I drove past it a few times and I thought, ooh, I don't know if I like, don't, don't I like the look of it, it looks a bit too edgy for me. And then somebody said, no, you definitely should go and, go and speak to Mahesh. So I messaged him and I was working at another barber shop at the time. Okay. And he, his instant response was, but you're working somewhere else. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, I know, but I, I still doesn't mean I don't want to come and work with you. Yeah. And he was like, okay, come on in then. Come on in, we'll meet you. And then, yeah, kind of just got on from day one, really. It was good. Uh, and then ever since, mate, yeah, kind of got on with him really well. And we've been friends ever since. And that's how I kind of got involved with Gentleman Rose Club through Mahesh, I like the brand and I just thought oh, I can see myself being, I didn't want to leave it, you know, I moved back to Birmingham, I didn't want to leave the brand, so I ended up staying with them and opening this shop, which was cool, because uh, through Beard Brand, we get a lot of people travel for, for haircuts and beard trims, and because all the shops are on the south coast, it kind of eliminates anyone past like the Midlands, really, you know, kind of anything north, so we get a lot of people now travel from from up north down to the Midlands. So it's kind of centre, central hub really, it's nice. So we've, cap, we've, we've kind of tapped that market now as well. So, sorry, I'm not talking what I'm doing here. I'm just, while I'm here, I'm just gonna clean up just the heel of the beard. So Stuart's already told me he wants a nice sharp line down there. We're doing similar to what we did earlier on Callum. We're not taking it straight down. We're just bringing it around. So it kind of suits the heel. And while we're here as well, we'll also sort the hook out. And 
And we're doing the same on this side. So we're just working it up. Not taking too much out, but just kind of making a solid line through there. <laughs> so we've got Callum's lovely new wall, 100th edition. Beautiful clipper. It's too shiny. Too there. shiny. Yeah. That way? Look at that, it's a thing of beauty, mate. It's a thing of, yeah, but, yeah, but people do, mate. Look, look at that, look, it's beautiful. Thing of beauty. So we've got a number two, and it's going to be closed. And I'm just removing, I'm going to put my first, I'm going to put the top of my fading, basically. Top of my blending. They do, mate, yeah. But he's also got a broken finger, so. He's not able to use them, mate. We've got, break, we've got to break them in for him. I don't know, dude. They, they do feel not. They feel. Well, like oh, listen, listen, listen to this, yeah. Listen to this. This is a senior, so I thought these are a very similar clipper, yeah. That's a big difference, you know. So it just runs a bit smoother for some reason. So it might be because they've got a, uh, a metal casing on top as well. It doesn't make as much rattle, but. It definitely feels, it definitely cuts smoother. So yeah, we're just carrying on with that number two. We're not we're going too much into the top. But we're just removing a little bit of bulk. Right, now we're going to move down from a two to a one and a half. One and a half. So I've got, I haven't explained what I'm doing again. I've got a number one guard, yeah, and it's fully open, so we've got a one and a half, and we're going just a little bit lower than the two now. Right, now we're going to drop down to a one. So it's closed, it's a full one. Right, we've got a 0.5 guard and we're putting it in a 0.75 position. So it's quarter closed. And this is where it's going to start making impact now. We need to start doing something like taking a barber chair out to the middle of nowhere and doing a haircut like on a cliff. Yeah? Okay, so now we're going to drop that down to a, a true 0.5, so it's completely closed and the 0.5 guards on. And then this is where my C motion starts to, starts to work. So I'm flicking that out. Do you get fed up doing skin fades? No, to be honest, you kind of, it's one of those things really, like you always trying to perfect it. So it, it never gets boring because you're always trying to better the last one you did. And some people have really nice hair to fade, and some people have quite tricky hair to fade. But um, it, I do like a nice scissor cut now, to be honest, because it's a bit of a change from the from the norm. But still enjoy skin fade as long as it's as long as somebody's kind of coming in there a bit open to how you do it. Some people are like, oh, I want it this high, and it's got to be perfect there. And I want a really short blend, and you think oh, I want to do it my way, you know? <laughs> right. So now we've got just the we've got no guard, just the blade, and I'm going to take it just off. So it's about. Point one, and they start picking out my bottom line. So one thing I will say about this clever is it hasn't been zero gapped. So when I fully close the blade, there's always a slight gap. I don't know if you can see it. There's a slight gap. It's just like a mil or two. It's about two, probably about two mil. So it's not zeroed. So it's you can't get it down to skin basically. Um, so what I will do in a second is I'll switch back to my zeroed senior, and that will help me just take it a little bit lower and blend into that kind of foil. So this one, if you can see it, the gaps are a bit smaller. And this will help me just flick out these last little bits and get that blend really tight.
How's that feeling on the sides, dude? Is that what you were thinking? Yeah, low enough? Okay, cool. Right, so we're going to move on to the top now. And we're going to use some water. So how much do you want to take off the top? Um, just kind of ends, that's all right. Okay, so you quite like your length then, yeah? Yeah. So, I just took the fringe out of the situation here. Trimmed it ever so slightly. And now I'm going to work this across. So I'll take a little section from here, as a reference. Right, so I'm just pulling this down, look, and we're working, we're working a nice line, a horizontal line, so that it marries up to here. <clears throat> Is that the kind of length you were thinking, yeah? Yeah, that's perfect. Okay, cool. So now we're going to have to drop a line in this side here, and then we're going to blend with scissors just through the edge here, and we're going to let that kind of disconnect on this side. <laughs> Right, so the plan now is to finish off with the beard. So I'm just going to blow dry that off quickly. Right, I'm going to drop some volume mousse in your beard quickly, and we're going to just blow dry it out, and see how it's sitting, and then I'll line it up and just take a little bit out of the cheek so it sits a bit flusher. So I'm just going to kind of uh, titivate that with with a brush, and it's going to blow in, it's blow dry into the into the beard and pull out the the length. It's also going to give it a bit of volume. So, we're not going to take too much off the bottom. We're just going to take enough to make a straight line, straight line. So, if you look, if you keep that directly straight there, tilt your chin up for me. That's it. So, now I'm going to just cut in the bottom through here. I'm just taking a little bit. That's giving a nice straight line there, look. Now I'm going to work this line here. So I'm just going to take just a touch. Still playing golf in your bedroom, Harry? Yeah, yeah. No, I ain't done anymore. He always went first. Yeah, it's on me, Harry. That's keeping it nice and square there. Okay, if you just look straight on at me again. So now at this point, we're just working this here. We've got seven inch scissors, we're just trimming. All right, now I'm going to use this as a reference point again. Use the mirror. If you keep your head slightly back for me, that's it. Keep it just there. That's giving that nice box off shape there. And then we're going to just take a little bit out of this now. Okay, so we've got a nice shape there now. I'm just going to take a little bit out of the cheeks. You going to wait for me, John, yeah? Yeah, no worries. So I'm using just the teeth of the clipper again. That's just giving that nice flush shape. So that when he looks in the mirror for me, if you just tilt slightly down, and now like, put your head as it would naturally sit. Is that what you were kind of thinking for shape wise, yeah? Yeah. So we just took that little bit out of there. It's just sitting nice and flush, yeah? Brilliant. Don't want to take too much out. I could make that really square for you, but you're going to lose length. Yeah. Do you get what I'm saying? So yeah, it's yeah. kind of maybe grow it a little bit longer, and then we can kind of box off okay. around the length it is now. 
Brilliant. Okay, cool. So, just drop it back there for me, Stuart. I'm just going to work now on the, on the sides. I'm just going to work on the sides and we're going to run a nice line down here and just sort the moustache out. So, again, I'm using the teeth of the clipper. I can use this, this wall clipper because the teeth are offset. So they're set back a little bit, so it's not going to nip the skin. But a zeroed magic clip would, would be cutting the skin there now. Right, now I'm just going to run over with seven inch scissors. <coughs> just through the sides. Just going to work downwards. And start making a nice solid line there. So are we going to a point on the sides here or are we just, are we just blending? Um, could we try a point, do you think, if that works? Say again, sorry? Could we try a point, if that point, works? Yeah. So we just shape that point with a natural line really. We haven't gone too far in it to make it sharp. And then we'll do the same on this side. Right, we're going to move through to this moustache. Yeah. We're just going to put this fish tail in. And we're just going to give that a little bit of help so that it splits. Okay, that's just cleared it through a little bit. It's given a little bit of space to get a tea in there or a coffee or whatever. It's kind of helps with his uh, overall day-to-day -day beard life. So do you want to have a look at that, Stuart, and just check that there's enough out of it? Brilliant. Okay, so we're going to just line quickly with a blade, just just on the edges, make that back to a point, okay? But you happy with the moustache? Yeah, really happy, thank you. Okay, so I'm going to use water for this lineup. And the reason being is, it's got quite soft hair anyway, and you can get a cleaner line with it. Uh, prefer, I prefer it to gel, to be honest. And we're just pulling it down here, and we're dropping it so that it comes to meet the moustache. But we're not going too far in it, nice high chi line. And then we're just going to tidy up around the edges. Okay, how's that feeling then, Stuart? Yeah, that's brilliant. Would you like a bit of oil or balm in that? Uh, no, that's fine. You're okay, you're going to keep it au naturel, yeah? Yeah, thank you very much. No problem. So I'm just going to clean your neck up, dude, and then we'll do a final spin. Hey, what's up beautiful people? I'm here with my buddy Paul. We're at the Beard Brand Barber Shop here in Austin, Texas. And uh, Paul doesn't know what he's gonna get today because we're gonna keep him turned away from the mirror the whole time. So it should be fun, let's do it. All right, Paul, so have you, I wanna say Eric told me you never had a fade before. Uh, is that, that is, is that true, I had to be Describe what a dope fade looks So describe like. your past haircuts to me, man. I would say three around the sides, top to match. Okay. That'd be about it. Yeah. So three on the side, top to match. Yeah. Hmm. No, negative. Not doing that. Well, he's, he's moving, so this is... Uh, yeah, yeah, this is... So you need something... Final, that's, new level. Final gift. I gotcha, I gotcha. Well, what I'm gonna do, instead of putting a three here, maybe I'll put it up here. Okay. And down here, maybe we'll do a one or even a half. Okay. I think that'll, uh, that way I won't completely shock your system by going straight bald right here. I got you, yeah. But you'll have a little bit of stubble around here and okay. it's gonna grow in real nice, real nice shape. All right. Um, 
And then for the top, how do you typically like to style it up there? Uh, I think what you're looking at is about it. That's, yeah. that's usually it's just that's like, usual move. Take my hand, drag it forward, and that would be it after the, <laughs> right. that is it. All right, so when we fade it today, we'll, we'll try something that you can style sort of doing this move instead of this one. I see, okay. We'll be doing something like this. I see, okay. Yeah, get you a nice little, maybe have the a little bit of wave in the front. This will be the star of the show, and then everything else will be supporting cast. Okay, right on. I think it's going to look pretty clean, man. Cool. So, Paul, where are you heading to, man? Uh, Washington, D.C. Oh, have you been before? You've only been to the visit. Uh, never lived there. What takes you up that way, man? Yeah, my wife, uh, she got a job there, so uh, I'm moving there. And yeah, her brother's there. My, my family's in Philly, so it's kind of nice that way. Nice, man. Yeah, I'm from eastern Pennsylvania, but I haven't been up there in a long time, man. You say you're from eastern Pennsylvania? Eastern Pennsylvania. Out in the middle of nowhere. Oh, like near Allentown, this? Allentown, I was like a half hour, maybe 45 yeah. away. Yeah. Is that where you, do you have family over there? Well, we're all in like Bucks County. Ah, uh, right on. Yeah. Yeah, you weren't too, too far from me, man. And I'm trying to think, you usually just pull your hair straight forward. I don't want to give you anything too complex to style. But yeah. um, what I had in mind is like, like pretty common, man. I, I think uh, the learning curve should be pretty short. Okay. Right. <laughs> Bird box haircut. <laughs> Except I'm the one who's blindfolded. Yeah, that's what I have. <laughs> oh, what is that maybe? It's... <laughs> no, not speed. speed. Oh, classic. You know, a fade, a fade is a taper, but a taper is not a fade. Maybe it's one of those type of situations. Basically, a fade is a really, a really, really close taper. That's a good way to think about it. So instead of the zero, the half, the one, and then until the full head of hair back here, it's actually, it's, it's just going all the way around the head. But on Paul, we're not gonna go all the way down the skin. I thought it'd be pretty close. Hiring barbers watcher and watching right now. When you see stuff like this, don't even ask, bro. Mm. Click this on, just whack that and, oh, immediately. <laughs> All right, right on. <laughs> I got you covered, man. I think in college, I would let it go super long and then nail it down to a crew cut uh, for the sake of waiting so long for the next haircut. And probably didn't really give up on that style that mode maybe a little more frequent with the haircuts these days but that's about it yeah but yeah this would be uh first time with a decent haircut i would say yeah, you take it easy the first couple days out there man oh yeah <laughs> That's what the ball cap's for right, Eric, yeah. I'm gonna wear that Washington Nationals hat. I'm not gonna be covering that for her. <laughs> oh. Oh, I got you. Oh, man. The pirate that walked into the barber shop with a uh, steering wheel attached to his hip. <laughs> Barbara looks over and goes, my God, you got a steering wheel attached to your hip. Barbara goes, I know, Barbara is driving me nuts. He's <laughs> <laughs> driving me nuts. <laughs> nice. Because he's steering wheel. Oh, 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 yeah. Hanging from his nuts. Got it. Nuts. <laughs> so if I wet it on the sides, especially like, you know, because I'm blending straight up here, like I'm finishing off the fade here, so I can see where all the weight is hiding on the sides here with the hair wet. And, and I mean, this is pretty much where I knew it was. But as I go and trim it up, 
I'll be able to get like a smoother transition going up the side. And then for the top, you want, definitely want to saturate the hair because cutting dry hair, I don't know, Bob, what do you think? I can't quite, I can't quite finish this one. I, uh, I usually base it on the texture of the hair. Yeah, yeah get really, in there. Really thick stuff, um, wet hair becomes a little bit more pliable and uh, you can boss it around and it uh, becomes a little bit more delicate. Um, whereas dry hair, super coarse, trying to smash yeah. through it, not as precise, it's a little more tiresome. Um, so yeah, that's a, that's a big one. I cut dry hair when, uh, like I said, texture is a texture issue. They have hair that kind of sprouts out as it gets short. Um, wet hair will lie to you. Oh, it's you every single to. time, man. Yeah. it dries, it'll just do whatever the hell it wants. So. And I'm going to do my best to cut this symmetrical for you so that you can still style it forward if you'd like. Sure, yeah. Or if maybe you fall in love with your hair looking super cool. I mean, this is like infinite. We did uh, three or four backyard COVID cuts oh with my wife um, okay. with the kitchen shears. Yeah, so. Oh, So, <laughs> this is. Did she get the hair wet first at least? No. That's a, big, that's, a, that's a big part of it, man. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Because if weird. it's dry, you'll pick up bigger sections with this texture of hair. Um, like what Bob was describing with lighter stuff. A uh, lot easier to yeah. jump up. First blind haircut, quote unquote. Not, not seeing, yeah. How much anxiety do you have right now about this? Nah, it's good. Okay. You're it's a good, good sport. You're a good sport, man. I'm excited. It's the right attitude to have on the barber shop, man. <laughs> Working with the barber is really, it's really a teamwork effort, man. I need time to learn your hair. You need time to learn who I am and how to communicate with me in a way that, you know, gets you the product that you want. Absolutely, yeah. Now, if you guys want to do some of this, what you're seeing at home, if you get yourself one of these flat, excuse me, one of these, um, oh, fuck, fine tooth uh, flat top combs. And I'm actually using a one and a half to do the clipper over comb here because I want to leave some bulk behind here. Um, he's got this medium to light density texture. And if I'm real aggressive with the blend, uh, I think the hair might spike up a little more than I wanted to. So if I leave more weight here, I feel like, I feel like the hair is just going to lay down better. Oh man. Eric, do you guys row together? Is that what's going on? Well, oh yeah. We're used to it. You guys that's, used to. Very cool. A week ago. Yeah. Yeah, we were rowing uh, doubles. Pretty good. Paul and I are about the same speed on the water. And uh, so he's really good to row with. And he's, uh, we call him Dr. Uh, Robotka. <laughs> he's got like 20 degrees. <laughs> I think he's a doctor. <laughs> <laughs> yes. 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 And uh, he can like in rowing, like you want to catch at the same rhythm over and over again. Gotcha. For like probably like a half an hour straight, he could maintain the exact same stroke, like catching the exact same cadence. Do you just do you have like a rhythm going on in your head, or like what that? Yeah, the you hell? just like how do you do that? Get super focused into word watching the water behind you and nothing else and just half hour later you've been doing the same thing. <laughs> I don't know. Temple smoke? Oh, uh, the the fragrance you just described when we were walking over here. Yeah, it's. Um, I don't know. I really like it. Uh, I think the the backstory of. Um, I guess you said it's from fragrances that are typically. Well, you don't have to sell. You just got to talk about what you like it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I can sell it. All right, right. I can right. sell it. I'll tell you. Yeah. I just like the smell. I mean, uh, that conference two years ago. I guess the conference we were at. Um, I got. 
that one and uh, two others, and I just really like this one. Get the yeah. yep, yeah. easy utility bar every day. Thanks, brother. Get you hooked up with that for cool. uh, being on the Dude, channel. That's a pretty sweet Thank party you. gift. Thank you. A little sea salt spray, styling bomb. Grab out some of this temple smoke. Ah, straight out the box. Mmm, so buttery. It's <laughs> actually too much. <laughs> Just a pea size, sir, after blow drying. Okay. Um, start there and then you can always add more if you need to. Okay. This is all preference. Oh man, temple smoke smells so good, bro. Absolutely, yeah. So I went heavy on the side that we're parting. So okay. I'm going to go a little heavy back here in the swirl. Yeah, yeah. And otherwise, I'm just going to kind of get it in there, but I really want to just rake it in there. Not too crazy. Okay. The volume is from uh, the brush that I used in the blow dryer. Okay, okay. So, oh man, it sounds like you had some of it. So I used the brush to pull the hair in the opposite direction that it grows. Yeah. And then I focused the heat on the, the root of the hair shaft. Okay, okay. So that's what gives it that, that little, little bit more flip in the front. Yes, yeah, yeah. Cool. So, yeah, you pull the hair in the opposite direction that it grows, aim the heat at the root. And then we move the heat up the hair shaft or that grouping of hairs. Right. And then you're gonna blow it in the direction that it does grow. Okay, okay. Because that's the direction that you're ultimately gonna style it. All right, Paul, get ready. All right. Don't be too upset with me. Whoa, nice. <laughs> Whoa. Right, awesome. dude? Awesome. Whoa. Wow, that's awesome. Cool. Cool. It's pretty nice yeah. hair, man. Nice. Max you like you're uh, no longer. So, <laughs> <laughs> beer brand, it's Charlie Abel at Jones and Rose Club, and about to cut Billy Simon's hair. I'm going to be doing a low skin fade. Anyways, what I'm going to do is start off with my wall detailers. I'm going to put in my zero line. Back for a takeaway. That went fast. Oh my god. Oh yeah, it was just before Christmas, wasn't it? That's mental. Love at first sight, mate. Is that all that is? You can just dust all those hairs off his head that are stuck to his head. And then when I go over the foils, it just makes it that little bit softer. So with the foils, what I like to do is around the ears, keep it this way around and just kind of flick around the ear. Charlie Rubble Technique. Charlie Rubble Technique. Now I've gone to my wall magics with the uh, one guard. What I'm going to do is a width of the finger flick above that detailer line. The reason I'm making it about a width of the finger is that so when I go in with my 0.5, I can, it gives me enough room to blend it through. So what I'm doing with my 0.5 guard is that I'm just flicking off that detailer line. So I'm holding it flat against the head, and then when I hit the line, I flick off it. And I just make sure I don't take it up to that 
one line. Just put it just underneath. So now, no guard, I've just opened it halfway between the 0.5 and the 0, so that's a 0.25. To help out, to make sure if you got the line or not, what I like to do is put my thumb just above the line and lift up, keeping the skin nice and taut, and that'll give me a little bit better sight on if it's with my, my booty. So what I've done now is I've just swapped over to my wall balding clippers. But what I'm going to do is going to get the fine tooth side of my comb and do some clipper over comb. The reason I'm using this specific comb with the finer teeth instead of the traditional wool, wool comb that comes with the clippers is that I feel like this gives you a little bit more of a, a dense compressed fade. And that's the kind of fade we're looking for right now. What I do is I remove the bulk going from right to left, like that. And then once that's gone, I just up and down, making sure it's all nice blended through. I'll show you with the other side. So if I dig my comb in, lift out so it's nice and square, then go from left to right, removing all that bulk. And now there's still a little faint line, so I just go, go back in there, and just up and down, working those little bits of hairs just to make it blend through. The reason I'm using a bolding clippers is because the teeth on the bolding clippers are a lot more together, real tight, there's no gap on them, there's no lever to increase the, uh, the distance between the two blades, so it is really close. I wouldn't use any other clipper for this type of technique. Back to the uh, magics. Fully open 0.5 guard. And I'm basically just flicking away this very faint line that I can see. Sweet, so I've now moved over to scissor over came. From the waist to the I'm, I'm on the waist, the, the waist to the head. Still using the fine tooth side of my comb, so this time I'm not keeping it flat to the head, I'm lifting off, just so uh, you can blend it out, get that nice square shape. Waist man. That was quick as well. So what I'm doing with the top is that I'm taking sections horizontally across the head and I'm just blend blending it in on the edges and then as I get to the center I'm then swapping over to point cut and then when I get to the left side I'll be back to club cutting. The reason that is is that I want the main center of the haircut textured but I want the edges blended in so there's my club cut to blend it in. I'll do one more section so from straight across horizontally across the head comb all that away. Club cut, shortest point to blend it in. Now I'm into the centre, point cut to add texture. How's that length seen bro? I'm going to put some product in there and just dry that all forwards and messy. Nice, and I've left this above my fingers pretty long so I can just grow out. Nice. So what I'm doing now, when I'm drying the hair, I'm growing it, drying it in the, uh, the growth pattern of the crown. So the crown wants to grow in this kind of circular motion, so that's going to be the way I dry it. Like that. So 
So I've now moved over to finger drying. Basically just getting that a little bit more texture out of it before I put product in it. Now I've got some matte clay, just really rubbing it in my hands. It's really working in there. And then what I tend to do is before I even try and style his hair, I just make sure I get it in there, make sure it's in the, in the roots. Get the product in the roots, it will uh, help it last throughout the day, it won't just fall flat. Sweet, and now it's all in there, now I start styling. How's that feel, bro? Yeah, sweet, let me show you in the mirror. Sweet, so you can see how I've got it real nice and short. And then when we get to about here, it just compresses and it all gets really long. Goes forwards. <laughs> nice one, bro. Nice, man. I've known you since your emo days, so bring bring some of that back. Hey, what's up, Beard Brand fam? I got my buddy Mark in the chair and uh, Marco for the people who uh, don't know him. And uh, I'm gonna make him look good because he is single, bilingual, and ready to mingle. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> you said it was gonna be normal. <laughs> So brother, what's uh? It's been a little while. Yeah. You uh, you had to to uh, skip your last cuts. <laughs> yeah. <it's> like, <laughs> I couldn't make it. <laughs> yeah, it's been a little while. So um, we got some catching up to do. What do you feel like doing today? Mm. You do anything crazy? Uh, we're gonna chop off this. Yeah, this we can get Johnny. That, what was that? Yeah. What was that character's name? The Johnny Bravo. Johnny Bravo. Nah, I was <laughs> thinking more like uh, the little kid from space, Johnny Neutron. Oh, Johnny. Yeah, <laughs> Jimmy Neutron. I think it was. Um, oh yeah, that's what it kind of looks like. So yeah, man, this is uh, this is this is hella long. That's uh, what you what you feeling these days, man? You wanna we used to do like skin fade down the bottom with uh, yeah, little. we don't have to go too low on the bottom this time. Okay, but pretty short up. We're definitely gonna get short without like scalping yeah. you, yeah, and yeah. then we're gonna take off quite a bit of length only because it's it's probably been a little too long since the last yeah, time. Yeah, it's really long. So time. yeah, let's get you uh, let's get you dialed in, man. So I got a, a two guard right now. Just I'm gonna I want to see how much it would take off. And I know you said that you don't want to go like too too short, but like still like yeah, it's short still enough. Like, yeah. I guess not like what we used to do in the summer, but still yeah, because you short. you take it down quite a bit. So I'm just gonna grab yeah. the three. I'm gonna open it up to three and a half, and that's that should be a safe zone because I can always taper it down a lot more. Um, yeah, bro, it's been. Ooh. Got some curlage yeah, up here. Yeah, it's if you I was like thing I need to get a haircut as soon as possible. <laughs> I let it I let it get too long. And then you missed that one and like I'm a pretty busy guy, so you can't yeah, yeah, yeah. you couldn't just jump in because uh, I'm so popular. Yeah. Yeah, my mom usually books all the appointments on the app just to make it look like I am <laughs> <laughs> a good barber. <laughs> so Took it down to about a one, and uh, yeah, we're gonna meet, match everything up now with the the rest. Other than working and drinking <laughs> funny named beers, yeah. uh, what you been up to, bro? Disc golf. Just stuff. Still disc golf. Oh, still. disc golf. I just yeah, say I heard man. you say just stuff. No, I'm still playing I was disc like, golf. That's a smart ass answer. I'm gonna give you a, <laughs> a <laughs> your haircut now. Yeah. Um, yeah, man, that's a, it is good weather for that too right now, hell yeah. Man, it's like perfect for right now, you don't really, you're not around anyone. I mean, people do play, but like, everyone keeps your distance, Hell oh, yeah, you know? for sure. That'd be weird if everyone like stayed on top of each other <laughs> yeah. disc, disc golf. Ah, I think you I guys mean, are missing the point. Yeah, so it works out, it's... Are you getting better? I feel, maybe, I don't know. I have gotten better since when I first started, for sure, but I'm not like amazing at it. I'm pretty sure like there's 
like when I go play, there's some people that you see that are just like really good. But I mean, I have fun. It's fun. And that's all that matters at the I'm end of the day. I'm not in the trees all day looking for this, <laughs> so that's a good. Yeah, usually when I'm sitting in this this line here, it's the beginning of the taper, and I uh, and I usually aim for this natural spot below the earlobes um, to never go higher than that. So when I say like I'm gonna give somebody a number one, number two, a skin fade, or whatever, uh, those are the markers that I'm looking for, and I'm also. Uh, yeah, even though I he asked for number one, my number one always tapers out into like nothing. So a majority of the one is like living here as a low fade, as most people would call it. But then, uh, yeah, these perimeters, these edges of the haircut will always taper out to either the length of their beards or or to skin just to uh, make the haircut look a lot, a lot more elevated. It lasts a lot longer. And if you put a line in somebody's neck, um, yeah, they have that. Uh, they have the, the look of somebody who needs a haircut right away because you can see that, that neck beard growing out right away. And this keeps that from happening. It's a little bit of a taper, gentleman's, gentleman's taper. Since we're not doing like a crazy fade, um, just cleans it up. Like I said, I'll try to do, I'll try to do the sideburns into whatever he's got going on in his beard or, or half a beard. <laughs> no, no, I didn't shave today. I meant to shave. You just grew this today? Nah, man. Yeah. This is like four months. <laughs> is, and it looks great. This is like and Corona beard. Corona beard. Yeah, a year and a half's worth of growth. Yeah. Little trick. When I turn the... This is opened up to a half. So like straight down to the skin like it's a half. But when you turn it on its side, this right here is about the same width as my comb. So it's just a little bit uh, shorter than a one. So you can start here and it'll be a half and then if you start going to the side, it's, it starts getting a little longer. So it blends nicely into the, the rest of the haircut without having to grab seven different clipper guards and just turn it sideways and usually blends in nicely. All right, I'm gonna guess that this is five inches long. Yeah, but uh, can you see on that side? No, you cannot. What is it? Yeah, five inches, dude. That's long. That's long. I'm usually pretty close on that. My guessing of how long hair is is a lot more accurate than how good my haircuts are. <laughs> <laughs> it's a parlor trick. Yeah. I can guess the length. So I'm thinking, I'm thinking we keep a lot of that length up front. Let it hang over a little bit. Get this a lot shorter. Yeah, yeah. So essentially like a Karen haircut. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want the Karen. Yeah, I don't know about that, man. Yeah, hey, you'll be fine. Yeah, you'll be, you've been wearing a lot of caps, right? Yeah, yeah. I'll, buy you, I'll buy you an Austin FC baseball cap too and <laughs> just call it a day. Yeah, so if it's five up here, I'm going to start aiming aggressively towards the back and we're going to get this stuff back here a lot shorter. You grow hair pretty quickly, so. Yeah. I'm not worried about you having to recover from any <laughs> mishaps, but I do want to keep that hair up front because, uh, yeah, it's fun. Yeah, my little dude's in uh, into Mutant Ninja Turtles right now, so I get to relive a lot of that. I was gonna say having a kid, you can like make him watch everything you used to watch. Oh and hell watch it yeah, again, and it's okay. <laughs> Yeah, we've been on a yeah like vintage kick, you know. Hopefully, uh, we get to the point where we get to start watching like scary stuff. Like, like <laughs> <laughs> how is he with like scary stuff oh, right now? Is he? he talks a big game. Yeah, dude. He, yeah, he talks a big game. He's like, yeah, I can, I'm not scared. I'm not scared. And then, <laughs> then I'll see him like with his eyes like this, and he's like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's like, no, I don't want. This. He says, uh, I'm a little uncomfortable. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, I mean, he shouldn't be ready for that kind of stuff. He's four. Some kids like scary stuff. Yeah, they're called man. serial killers, bro. Yeah, I guess. Did you guys have the Discovery Zone growing up in your neck of the woods? They did. There, there was one. You know, yeah, I never got to go to it. The Jungle Gym? Yeah. Oh, yeah, because you probably weren't they listening to one. your mom, dude. <laughs> mom didn't let me go there, but I remember 
seen like commercials and stuff and there was one because where I'm from Racine the one they had it was Milwaukee and Milwaukee's like Milwaukee had all the good stuff man now Milwaukee's you, like the, now you the, bigger, the not better you. city the best the better Wisconsin <laughs> city Racine is just like uh It'd be like, um... It's like the Waco of like, Texas. Yeah, or not like Georgetown oh. or something, you know. Or, Dick or they're like, too close, man. You can't be talking <laughs> about cities saying, that are that close. I'm saying like, yeah, I guess it would be like Buda or something. I don't know. <laughs> I'm trying to think what's farther. People are going to, in this video, either they're going to edit this out or they're going to leave it in. They're going to leave yeah. it in and people are going to start like map questing. Yeah. Map questing the, uh, <laughs> those cities. So right now, I'm pretty happy with the top length, but now I'm just trying to uh, shrink these, these sides to, to blend in with it a little, a little nicer. His, his whirl is a little lower on his head, so this is gonna fight us a tad bit more. And uh, in order to avoid some of that, I'm gonna, like I said, Soften it up with a razor. You can see his whirl is right there. And this hair naturally wants to go up. And since the two, you know, I cut off a lot of that weight back here um, to get through that, I'm gonna hit it with a razor just to soften it up. That should allow it to lay down without so much effort on his part and product and, and bed head. So I'm, I'm looking at how long the hair is. So like if the hair is an inch long, I'm trying to do just any hair that I'm trying to hit is I'm trying to hit it at the last third of the hair right here. If I hit it too short, a lot of these guys are going to sprout up and, and fight the cowlick and fight the fight. But um, if you just weaken those edges, um, yeah, it'll, it'll play a lot nicer. Um, and you're right, yes. Instead of like shaving and dragging the, the razor through, I'm just tapping I'm just tapping it down with a little bit of a of a pull at the very end. And you can see that there are there is some hair coming off, but it's not super aggressive. And all those other hairs that are getting hit and not cut are getting softer. So hopefully with minimum effort, those hairs will start to lay down, even though they're a lot shorter. Um, this process will speed up that like softening of the of the actual hair shaft. Trying to make you, uh, trying to make you flaccid like a flaccid <laughs> hair shaft. I'm gonna use some tree rangers since most of your discs end up in the trees. <laughs> oh, <laughs> clever, clever. I told you my discs don't end in the trees anymore. Well, it's a, this is like a tree repellent. So <laughs> it'll save the discs that I have not thrown in there yet. Oh, this is the deodorant. My bad. No, just <laughs> <laughs> it's a little like tree. So fall up a little bit our tree ranger styling balm. Same thing. Don't like just smash it through the front, working from the back to the front. So, as you start bringing this back, you're still re coating a lot of that hair. Everything's getting some good coverage. Using your fingers, not a, not a ton of uh, effort, just. Mm -hmm. So, if you have any of these stubborn guys, something I like to do is like I'll do this and I'll hold it mm -hmm. and it'll. If you just run your fingers, it'll it'll fight you. Keep, yeah. But if you have one of these little guys that's still being a little stubborn, just mm. hold a little bit longer than the rest, and it'll it'll start to start to take shape. You guys do a super americana for Thanksgiving or little pozole, little tamales? Uh, it's it's super americana. Christmas is when it's like the yes, we're the same way, man. Yeah, I eat the. Uh, I eat the, the, the whitest meal, yeah. and when I mean white, I don't mean like white people, I mean like color white, like it's like <laughs> white turkey and it's yeah. like white bread. It's yeah. like macaroni and cheese with white cheese. And the mashed potatoes, the white potatoes. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I was like, <laughs> do we have any vegetables on this table? It's like, hell no. Especially in Wisconsin, just the way I it's like just it. like carbs on carbs and cheese. Oh, dude, all day long, man. Starch, all starch. Can sign me up. But Christmas, that's tamales and pozole. Yeah. And stuff. That's uh, that's how we that's how we jam.
Hi, I'm Henry getting my hair cut at Gentleman Rose Club by Josh. Sweet. <laughs> yes. Oh, <laughs> We're just doing a little low skin phase for <laughs> Henry. All we're just going to do is take my zero. I should feel a lot like me. Yeah. Ran this scum to that phase. 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 Yeah, that's exactly what we're doing. Yeah, that's exactly what we're doing. Alright, so let's get more point five. Oh my god, I just noticed Josh's yeah, nails, mate. Oh yeah, oh he's gonna get murdered. Ah, you're gonna get murdered, mate. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care, that's mate. Good. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I like. Right, pull up your Saturday. Oh yeah, it's Saturday, man. The first comment about my fingers, I post on my Instagram. Right, two, back inside. Every, every guard we just go up is following the same line. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, well, but once you know what you're doing, it's like piss a piss. So does he watch the whole entire video and then well, obviously? Yeah, but faster. Yeah. If that makes sense. I've never seen how he works actually. Never met, physically met. Me and me, Mark. Yeah, just following the one and a half round, just making sure I've got some of the weight out. Yeah. Would you go Amsterdam, Henry? What's that, sorry? Would you go Amsterdam? Yeah, yeah, I yeah. probably would. I mean, I'm not, I'm not really that fast far out there. Yeah. Yeah. Still like a coffee shop. Right? Yeah. yeah. But, see, this time, this time yeah. I went, I didn't bother, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But no, it's it's nice. Nice. Yeah, we try to get out of the way I think we have heard anyone say that. No. Yeah, you can cut that out. Just go back to my point five just to bend out this little line. Yeah, the first time I went, I uh, saw a motorbike and a cyclist crash into each other, like literally like right in front of me, just bang. Yeah. Both, both come off their bikes, and they literally picked it up, just sort of like spudded, got on their bikes, and off they went. Because like the roads are massive, you've got like the sidewalk, then you've got the uh, cycle path, then in front of the cycle path's a tram, then you've got the road, and then it's obviously tram, cycle path, path. So it's like yeah, but it's massive. Like, so what I've done now is just switch to my Oscars because they're a little bit shorter. Jeez. Just to create a little bit more tighter taper. My Oscars are a lot better than the uh, the and it's done zero gaps. So it just gets that uh, any sort of little line that I can see these are the better ones because they open to, to a one guard so I'm not worry too much about um, trying to taper out and then intruding into the line that I've already created so with these I can open it straight to a one and I know that my one guard's around there so I'm going to go too high it won't take too much off so what I'm doing now is just with the scissors just to pinch a little bit here I'll leave the fringe a little bit longer. Yeah, yeah. <coughs> All I'm doing here is keeping my fingers flat to the head. I'm just taking those sides off. Yeah, 
Yeah, why not? Yeah. And get to the next ship's off and just yeah, so you can start there. Just have a free job with what you've got and make them through here. Look at my little shears, mate. Look at the one I know. Texturizers. Yeah. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> Your dad's a rad. Yeah. yeah. I've got a rad dad. Hey, we really, really like them. Like, really like, like, why didn't I call you like Rad Jr.? Why didn't you just call you Rad? So I'm not going in too flat, just sort of going in through and just flicking off the edges. <laughs> it's Brad Junior's first up there. It's a little bit of style and balm. For our kid Henry. See, Messi like that looks good. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, like you just have. Yeah. Uh, yeah, a little bit more. Let me see. Turn to me, your face. I like yeah. that. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. Do you like that? Yeah. <laughs> Henry's a simple man. He just <laughs> he gets yeah, whatever up. you like. He likes. <laughs> Sweet. Henry. Happy. Yeah, yeah, that's great. Sweet. Man. I'm Andy Tolu, and we're at Steve's Barbers, cutting hair, and this is Legend. Say hello, Legend. Hello. All right. Number three. There we go. If you upset me, I'm going to do a number two, yeah? <laughs> So basically we're going to do a three just to cover this area here and then I'm going to break it down with a two and a modified two. So this is a three now. There we are. What's the goal? What's the goal? The goal is basically we're going to give it, he wants a number one, but I've just suggested that we do a little low zero here so we can get a good outline so i'm going to add into the number one a low zero and make his hair look pretty now if you notice his hair here this this part is raised too high and that's low so it's coming like that so whenever you're doing a free you've got to go slightly a little bit shorter there to balance it out i usually do it don't tell the customer because i don't want them panicking you know what i mean don't do it. You know? But, uh, yeah. So he wouldn't have known now that I did a two. I wouldn't have told him. Yeah, because he doesn't need to know, but obviously I'm letting you know now, yeah? He would have thought this was a three. But really, when this is higher and that's lower, yeah, what you do is, is you, you raise that lower a little bit so it balances out there. Yeah, does that make sense? You sure? So here we have the modifier two. There it is, and I'm just breaking it down from here, all the way around, so that I can prepare it for the number one, yeah? So this modifier 2 is preparing this for the number one. There we go. Sometimes you need to go back to your number two, just to smooth things off. If you, if you observe, there's anything to smooth off. All right, so the modified two prepares for the number one. All right, so here we are, here's the number one there. This is the easier way of doing a number one haircut. At the moment, the lever's back, so it's a one and a half, yeah? At the moment. There we are. Right, so here we get the one there. So that was a one and a half, that, and then we get the one. But I'm going to do the one from here. There 
Here we are. The Get the free ball here. I've arched it so I can fade it out. I don't do all haircuts like this, but some I do, some I don't. Right, so that's a modified one. I'll call it a modified one, alright? So it's a one point, okay? There we go, 1.5 millimeter. I'll call it a modified one. Easy to understand. So the Americans that all got all funny names for these numbers. So this gentleman has asked for a number one, but I'm just giving him a little extra edit touches. Most barbers will do a number one, line it, and that's it. I've done a quarter, I've done a little zero, I've done a little modified one there. I'm going to move that in a minute. Just so it's a little bit more nicer. We go back to the one, just remove these edges here. So I'm trying to re retain that, the dark bit there. That, that, leave that bit, it goes with the eyebrow. It does, isn't it? <laughs> Shall we leave it, bro? Right. Shall we leave that bit with the eyebrows? Right. Bro, I'm going to have to deal with you, mate. Don't talk about my plan like that. <laughs> Now the reason why I'm scraping it up to this point here is because I don't want my free ball to come right up to this edge here. So I'm going to bring my free ball a bit lower. So I'm turning the machine upside down. Like this, there you go. Upside down here. Upside down right up into the line there. So that when I do my free ball, it only has to come up to there, right? Yeah. So this is just a temporary thing I'm doing. It doesn't mean that it's going to stay like this, because once I shape it, it's going to change. But it's just so that I can do that. So we go. So initially he just wanted a number one, yeah? So I suggested, yeah, that we do a little low zero. Which, it just gives it that little edge to the dole, to the solo. And then, this is my favorite razor, this. I love this razor. You know how I got this razor? Basically, all right, there was a guy on the street, yeah? This is how I got this razor, yeah? And he challenged me to an arm wrestle. I lost, but I still got it off him. Right. So remember what I said. You turn this upside down. All right. When you're doing the skin fade, all right, and you want to use the free ball, you don't have to actually use the cutthroat. If you're going to do a skin fade all the way around, you apply the same principle. You do your line like that, and then you get it and you turn it upside down and you scrape it. Then you get from here to here, yeah, and you see it leaves a bit of a shadow. Can you see it? That shadow, what you do, you can either scrape all of it, but I'm not going to do it on this side, because I'll show you. All right, on that shadow there, you get the free ball. 
and you only come up to the shadow. There you go. I don't come up to the line completely. So if you're doing the skin fed all the way around, just turn the machine upside down, come up to there, and only come up to that shadow. There, you see where I stopped there? See that? I haven't got any higher than that. I've just stopped to there. So I haven't gone up to there. There you go, I'll stop there. See that? And that's where the that's where free ball is. As I said, this what I'm doing here, this bit is temporary because it may change when I do the shape up. It may not. So for now, we're doing it there. So once you've done that, you just get your zero. You just skip this little edge here. If you want to keep it darker, you skip that little edge there. You just you just skip it from there to there. It just means you have to keep coming backwards and forwards with your number one and your modified one. So this is the number one. And I have to just come back to my modified one. There it is. I call this modified one, just to make things easier. If it doesn't come off of your big clipper, it means because it needs a small clipper. So there we are. But I added a little fade here and there, just to give it a smoother look. Do you like that, yeah? If you look in the mirror there, all right, it just adds a little smoother look, yeah? So when you're doing a number one all over, it's nice to have a little, little blend on the side, yeah? So it looks nice and fresh. All we're gonna do is, mate, we're just gonna go over it one more time. On top, there you go, just one more time on top. Just to make sure. I wanna make sure that my client's hair, there's no longer bits left on the hair. So on this part here now, I'm just gonna make sure that this part's slightly shorter because as I said, it's higher and that's lower. It doesn't look all right. So this is a number two. So I've gone from a three, slowly, slowly. It's a three coming slowly, slowly into a number two, just on the edges here. But you can't notice it, can you? You can't notice it. So if I never told you, you won't know, would you? Exactly. So if you're if a good barber would, wouldn't tell you he would just do it because you don't know, he knows his job, yeah? But what's important is when you're shaping up is to, and the reason why I'm adding this is because I want to blow dry that and straighten it out. It's this bit here. Okay. It's alpha, so I'm going to shape it up now. So the reason why I'm blow drying this it's not, it's because some of the hair is going that way. So when I shape it, I need it to all, right, be sitting still in the place where I want it to be. Notice I'm not shaping it on top, I'm actually shaping underneath the hair. Because if I shape on top, it's going to go too high, so I'm actually going un underneath, inside the hair. The only place where I'm shaping on top now is on, on the corner here. You have to keep brushing it because see these bits there they're going sideways so when he does it it's not going to look right so so you, you think like a, a number three on top and a one on the sides i could have done this in literally five minutes but because i decided i decided to give him a little touch in edges it changes completely how the haircut is I've had enough of you now. I've had enough on the, you've been on my chair long enough. You know what I mean? You know? It's been like, it's been really good. You know what I mean? Appreciate you putting up with me. Cause usually people don't get upset. At least like example, 
you can just do little touches if you feel once you're finished. You know, he's missed his appointment, I think. <laughs> no, I'm joking. All right, brother. All right, you happy? Yeah? Sure, bro? Definitely? Thanks, brother.